Recording in progress. Excuse me. Until six o'clock, so we're going to get started. If you want me to kind of read out the agenda. Please, please, but I kind of got a little bit memorized. First thing is community input. Um, well, actually, this is um, a different meeting. It's not a regular meeting. All right. So we start right with a public hearing. All right, public hearing. Um, um, on Main Street Ordinance. Okay, is there any, any input on the Main Street Ordinance before we make our vote? Yep, so open it up to public input for the Main Street Ordinance. Um, so call the meeting door at 6 o'clock. Yep. Oh, Hi. Hi. My name is David Hill, 619 Main Street. Um, I think, I don't know if I have to reiterate things. Probably that not. You don't. <laughs> well, you we can. So I, need to. I, I won't bother unless there's a, you know, a, a voicing you know, in favor of keeping this. So, thank you. All right, so I'm just going to give a teeny feedback from my own opinion. Uh, first of all, if we put the residents on Main Street through a lot of uh, hectic, I apologize for that, myself, for voting for it um, on the last time around. And the one thing I said a couple of meetings ago is one thing I appreciate from the community is the community spirit. You guys all work together on the parking issues and know. There's a gentleman here who mentioned about having no problem parking over the sewer coverage and you guys all work together. So it's always a nice feeling to have that there's no issues between your neighbors. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to say that before we open up the vote. Do you have any, any comment or anything before? Um, no, I think my, my only comment, as I had mentioned, was you know, I feel that um, it, it appears to me having you know, been to the safety committee meeting and hearing everybody, it wasn't... Um, it didn't originate as a safety issue, <clears throat> um, so I, I feel like it's probably a battle that the town should have um, left alone. So I apologize for the inconvenience as well, Dave. Thank you. All right, so do you want to make a motion? Um, any other public input? Any other public input? Oh, I'm sorry, um, just I just wanted to ask a quick question, Alice Cullody, uh, 25 South Street. I heard you mention the sewer manhole. Sorry, I stepped out for a second. Yep. Was there any decision about not allowing parking over that, or is that has that not really been uh, That's part the expectation. of it? The expectation, yeah. so the gentleman who lives, I go to say it's 629 or 631, I can't remember where exactly, mm -hmm. on Main Street, the gentleman was brought up in the meeting and he he said it wouldn't be a problem, he'll abide by it. So as long as it's not an issue, I see it as a non-issue now. If it becomes an issue, then okay. it can be brought up for the discussion okay. of maybe putting a no parking, but I hopefully I don't foresee that. And I and I expect the police to for, of course would enforce any issues that they see over there. So Okay, thank you. <laughs> Could that be painted with no stripes? Mm-hmm. Just identify it on the project problem. George about that. Good 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 Hello. How are you doing? Hi, hey, thanks. Okay. Um, actually, there's quite a few people in this door, okay. so this is good. We want to open it up. Uh, um, yep. I think we should. Well, let's open up to public input in the room, and then okay. we'll open up to public input uh, online. That's okay? Yep. Um, any other public input about the Main Street Parking Ordinance? Michelle? I'll just say what I've already said. Um, I'd like it to go back to what it was. Seeing okay. that there's no safety issues. Anything else up here? No? Okay. Um, any input online regarding the Main Street Parking Ordinance change? Um, you'll have to raise your hand if you want to um, unmute yourself. Looks like not. Uh, I don't see any other input. Okay. All right, do so you want to make a motion? Um, oh, actually, let me, let me bring it up. Get, get the motion, the words there, I guess. Sorry. I got to say it was October 2019. Seventy-five one, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. I'll just I'll make a motion 
um, to revert the changes um, of Parking Ordinance 75-01 <clears throat> regarding Main Street restrictions um, that were implemented on January 28, 2021. I'll double check that date. Okay. Um, to revert it back to the version of the ordinance prior to that. I think it was December. December. Which I'll check. The meeting was in December, but I think it was signed in January. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Was, I'm pretty sure it's January 28th. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Um, okay. Yep, January 28th, 2021. So section three, the parking ordinance change approved on January 28th, 2021, restricts parking on Main Street from Front Street to a point 15 feet west of Prospect Street <clears throat> intersection um, be reverted. Okay, I will second that. Aye. 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 Okay. So two things um, we will get with George about removing the signs and also painting um, like probably yellow over the, the sewer cover just to make sure it's really obvious. Okay. Okay. Do you know when that might when we might be able to park out front again or right away? Okay, hey, thank you. <laughs> Tonight. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 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 snow. Well, yeah, it's like snow. Did I mark the word? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Snowman. Thank you very much. Sorry for the interview. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. See you, Jerry. Yep, so that was public hearing. Oh, that was, yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing is um, uh, is CJ registrations. All right. So I'll speak a little briefly on that. Um, so I called I called the state and talked to, talked to the woman in charge there of this operation, Kathy Dimont, and it's part of the IRP program, which. Basically, five of the buses, not basically, five of the buses are, have permit plates. They're owned by the state and leased by Jalbert. And that's why there's a complete wave on the administration pay, uh, registration pay. Um, I also talked to the London area. They do the same thing. Um, again, the woman's name for reference was Kathy Dymet, D-Y-M-E-N-T, Dymet. I don't know if there's any public is there any? Is it with a C or a K? It's D Y. No, no, K. Oh, it's sorry. K. K. My apologies. Okay. Um, I, I feel like if we um, clarify with the state um, and the auditors, and we we checked with the auditors as well, yes. and the auditors basically said that we, what we're doing is okay. Okay. Great. All right. So, all right. Um. Yeah, but definitely public input. Yes, I am at public input. So, as you know, as a former clerk, uh, I work at Kate, Kate Nesman, thank you to Heritage Drive. Um, I worked closely with CJ, um, and I'm concerned about us giving him a hard time, as we've been giving him a hard time, um, because he has the choice of doing all his buses in Portsmouth or Rollins Street. And when you're in business and you need to get your buses done, you need to get them done. And it's already come up once this year that he's taken, I think, $6,000 over to Portsmouth instead of Rollins Street. And he was so wound up about this, which you as a board needs to know, if the town auditors are okay with it, it should have never gotten to this point. The town auditors know, the state of New Hampshire knows, it says right on the bus, property of state of New Hampshire, they are not his buses. And he's so checked off, He's going to pull his buses from our town, and he can do that. So we need to stop pushing revenue away and start working with people. Because there is lost money, and it's going to continue. And it's situations like this that kick people off. It's legitimate. So I'd like to interject for a minute. So I, I agree it shouldn't take two weeks. A month. Um, until we found out about it. Until we found out. the board found out about it. Until I found out about it. it was less than two weeks, but um, new town clerk and 
new board. So we weren't exactly sure. I, it probably should have voted, been voted on Monday night. But until you know, no. I had clear, until I had clarification, um, it dragged on. And just, I mean, we, we pay the town auditors. This was a situation. We, we hundreds of thousands of dollars of loss revenue they would have known about. We, we didn't know. We didn't know what we didn't know, and now we know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. And I, I think we probably need to. Uh, one of the like things policy. we need to do is make sure that we track this somehow, yeah. so we don't have the same issue. Yeah. So we don't have the same issue next year. Right. Wait, the state will even say in the auditors there isn't anything in writing. I know Kathy. I talked to Kathy. Yeah, I did too. And uh, the auditors. We need some documentation that says that we know now. Yeah. 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 So we need policy. They do own the buses. And, and as Jim said, they do this throughout the state of New Hampshire. We're not the only town. And it's only four of his buses, but we could lose all of it. He owns a company in Portsmouth and Rollins. His buses are purchased through Portsmouth because that's his main office. He can register in either place. When he comes here and he can't get them done, and he's a businessman, he's got to get them done, he goes to Portsmouth. And we lose the revenue. So I understand, I understand what you're saying, and until we got clarity, and it, again, it shouldn't have dragged on as long as it did. Um, as soon as I talked to Ryan there and they explained the permanent plates, which yeah. didn't quite register the last time when we talked to Dan, it made total sense. Yeah, and, and they sent me a picture right on the bus that says property of the state of New Hampshire. You know, it was pretty clear, but again, rely on our town auditors. That's what we pay them for. There shouldn't have been any, we shouldn't have had to do anything other than, you know, rely on them. They're well aware of the process. So I think I want to see money go out of town. Thank you, Kate. And I don't disagree with you on that. Yeah, we need to keep as much as we can. Um, so, Lorraine, I'll, yeah. I'll get to you, Dave. I see your hand, so. Thank you. Yep. I can proceed? Okay. Um, the only reason I had raised this, this isn't an issue, I wasn't, you know, this really had nothing to do with the taxpayer himself. This is really an issue about if you didn't know exactly who owned them, right. I don't Process. think we have, we have to be careful about who it is that has the power to waive. Because you know, like if you did waive and it were a waiver, if, you, if one board waived, the next board wouldn't be able to waive the same that they would have to vote separately to waive it, and it would have to be in the minutes each time. Mm -hmm. And in this time, of course, you want to include in the minutes that we understand that it's not a waiver, but in fact these buses wouldn't be taxed at all because they belong to the state of New Hampshire, which is a whole different issue. I um, agree with that. that. That those were my concerns. They really had nothing to do with the taxpayer himself. I can't imagine. I that. think your concerns are legitimate, but right. Yeah. But those we, were the we, only. Like reasons. I said, we didn't know what we didn't know. That's right. But those those yeah. those were the reasons that I was concerned. Yeah. No, I see no problem with that. I just wish it didn't take this long. <laughs> Sorry, mm -hmm. um, Okay, uh, Dave, um, do you want to unmute yourself, Dave Jasko? Public input online. No. Um, I, I guess Dave doesn't have. Um, um, do, any any other public input in the room? Okay. Okay. Well, we'll reserve the right for him to come back. <laughs> public okay. input. Oh, there we go. Dave, I see you unmuted. Did you have input, Dave? Nope, he muted himself again. Okay. One more time. Um, I talked to Dan this morning. He's ready to go. Okay. Great. Just so we're clear. Oh, just another point. As the state comes down, he always registers, registers them in September because the state comes and does their inspections. Mm -hmm. So for him to have to do it in October, he has to reschedule, and that's a problem. And that's why this delay wasn't helpful. I did talk to his Mike. 
Yeah. Yeah. On Thursday of last week. Me too. I was trying to get blood when my phone was blowing up. And explain the situation, <laughs> and he told me he was perfectly fine with waiting until the fine, the board decision. Right. So it's official for Monday. I think we're settled on that, yep. so no issues there. Okay, good. And I made a note that it really needs to be policy going forward that more clearly defines that. And and Dan can certainly keep a copy of it in his office. And, yeah. yeah. I, I think Dan knows now. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right, great. Okay. Um, so moving on. Um, let's see. So um, next order of business is um, Rollinsford Water and Sewer ARPA project funding. Um, should we all sure. come up or sure. Sorry, well, I'm so going to take over your home. Thank no, you. Come on. Come sit. Okay. Have you had a chance to read through what you're doing? I didn't, but I'm going to. And Jack, you have an answer either, but I briefly went through it, but I'm okay. We can describe or discuss. Yes. Do you need us to print or No, I did print one. For myself, do you have one? Because I can print them. I just need to go in there. Uh, actually, I need to go across to print them if you want. Why don't you do that? Okay. I'd like to look at them. Yeah, and actually, that would be good because mine is a little bit bad. I'd rather take the five minutes and do that. Yeah. So there was, there, I know there was a few things. Uh, the only problem is this, I have to go. Uh, good enough, Carl. Oh, 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 yes, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can take that. Oh, do you have some? Yes, I do. I've got some. Thank you. I have to take the microphone with me in the other room, so I'll just kind of fit. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, how's everything going down there? Good. Well, keep busy. <laughs> well, actually, first, I just wanted to say thank you for having us come, and just for Jack, because you probably don't know us, I'm Allison Kelly, Hi, I'm Alice. the chair of the Water Sewer Board, and this is the superintendent, Ray McNeil, hey, Ray. Um, hey. Pat Paluski, a fellow commissioner, Hello. and then this is Mike Curry from Wright Pierce, an engineering firm that we Thank you for with. coming in, folks. Yeah, thank you. I'm the new kid, so I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what, you, what was your name, sir? Mike Curry. Mike Curry from, okay. from Ray Pierce. Yep. Okay. Um, so when we first initially reached out to you all back in July, um, when we kind of had heard of the ARPA funds and this whole um, situation about the town being the one that gets the funds, um, that we, because we're a village district, we weren't eligible to receive any funds on our own, but um, can have them allocated to us from the town. So we first reached out and we um, described a couple of p potential projects that we might want to work on with these funds. Um, and then we've just sent you quite a long list of projects that we have on our to-do list. Um, and like I said in my email, we know that these ARPA funds would never cover all of these projects. Um, but we, A, I know none of you are in the water sewer district, so you might not be tuned into what we are up against with the long list of things that need to happen. Um, and, you know, I'm also not sure, I haven't heard too many discussions from the town's end as far as the ARPA funds, and if you all have your own ideas on projects um, for putting, you know, towards those funds, I know that they're mainly designed for water and wastewater infrastructure, and there's a few other things, maybe stormwater and broadband. Um, so that's another reason why we sent the long list, just to say, you know, we could we could easily find a use for all of these all of funds, uh, absolutely, and then some. Um, so, you know, we wanted to talk about some projects more specifically than others. Um, and like I said, we have um, some engineering support here also to help us describe these projects in more detail. How much money is in that fund? Two. I think it's yeah, like 265, I think, was the number. Um, so I thought maybe we could start. Um, so initially, when I reached out, I had talked about this one Porter Well um, project and then another one on the sewer side with its cross-country sewer line. Our Porter Well project, we are already moving forward with that with our own um, funding through the asset management grant. So that's kind of off the table as far as the ARPA funds go. Um, but for the cross-country sewer line, I don't know if 
Ray or Mike, which one of you guys might want to jump in to kind of describe what the situation is there. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring you up to speed on it and then Mike can dive in a little more on the technical end of it. So uh, parallel to Pine Street, we have a cross-country sewer line that connects down from Prospect to the intersection where the culvert is on Willie Street, right? So if you were standing on the culvert heading towards the school and look to your right, going downstream, uh, about 100 yards in, we have a sewer line that is exposed. It goes from one bank of the river to the other. It's, it was built that way. It's designed to be that way. Um, our system primarily is gravity, right? So that section's all gravity fed, working its way down to the Foundry Street lift station. Uh, the reason why is it, it's exposed is we don't have the elevation to bring it down in below uh, the wetlands and then back up, obviously, doesn't can't do that without a lift station. So when it was built, it was exposed. It's a, when was it built? It's original, I'd say late 70s. Okay. Right? Um, Boarding in progress. It, uh, it's, a, it's an old cast iron pipe. It's been lined. <clears throat> it was a leak detected uh, back in 17. It was lined. Um, that leak's been effectively corrected at this point. Um, some of the concerns that we have right now, though, is it is it's exposed. Obviously, the the woods around have grown up over the years. There's some looming trees that are hanging over the bank and that could potentially fall and take that out. Uh, it doesn't really have a lot of support other than uh, the structures that were built on both sides that and then it spans. Um, and that's where I'm going to kind of bring Mike in because we've discussed some different options how we could remedy the situation to give it some protection but also stability uh, i'll let you jump in from there that's good yeah so this uh this type of sewer construction is not typical um you know it was as as we're sort of walking to it uh, he was describing it to me and i couldn't just like draw it picture <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, it's funny i've seen these up in uh up Further in the north country, in the mountains, sometimes you'll see them, right? Because instead of having to horizontally drill and go underneath a stream, um, the simple way out is just to go over the stream, right? And, and in New Hampshire, uh, we oftentimes, we, we want to bury things as much as we can with gravity sewers so they don't freeze. But this is a short, completely exposed section. It just kind of acts as its own bridge across yeah. this, this wetland area. It's about 45 feet. Yeah. I think that's... Um, it's, it's a span that when you look at it, it, it kind of makes your stomach a little queasy uh, just because it's completely unsupported. We talked about a few different ways that we could mitigate concerns with it. Like the, if you were going to build this originally, it wouldn't have been done that way. Now, um, you probably would horizontally drill or try to find a way around it, whether it's a bridge or, or some other culvert. Um, but, you know, it's, it's there right now, so we got to work with what we have. Um, and we talked a little bit about some options, one of which was um, to put a couple I-beams over top uh, from one manhole to the other, essentially support that beam from the top. So, uh, like Ray said, it had been lined. There's a PVC pipe now that spans from side to side. Um, that slipped in between um, that old cast pipe that's there. Um, the nice part about that, that pipe is that it's, it's pretty rigid, um, but again, it's, it, there's some rusty spots on it. I'd say with the, the PVC in there, it, it gives us a little bit of breathing room, but again, it's unsupported. That's the, the problem that we have with this piece. So instead of, of looking at trying to drive piles and putting some sort of foundation and supporting it from below, our thought was it would be a good idea to support it from above. Um, these are just some of the ideas that we, yeah. we've kind of discussed at this point. And, and what does that cost? So we put a planning level number in here uh, of roughly eighty thousand um, dollars. I think you know realistically. Is I, that for what you're saying for the pipe? Yeah, it, it's it's actually it really would just be leaving the pipe in place and putting a couple I beams above it and supporting them from from above. Because um, the issue that we have here is that it's a forty five foot clear span, so it's a pipe supporting itself. If you think about, if you uh, take a tape measure. And get it out to 15 feet, 20 feet, it's okay, and then all of a sudden it wants to snap. It's the same concept with this pipe. Um, it's just, it's a really, really long span to be unsupported. And how high off the ground are we talking? I'd say five and a half, six feet. I mean, if it's 
boat eye level mm -hmm. when I'm down in the you know in that colder area. Man, I know the area. I grew up in the towns. So I know the area pretty yeah. good. I don't quite remember that pipe, but I'm sure I've seen it as a kid. It's you know what? If you're not looking for it, it blends in. It's one of those things. I um, that George and I had spoke about it. And I brought George out there, and he's like, I had no idea this existed, right? And he's on the stormwater committee, and um, it's. Him and I have had a lot of conversations about it with concern around stormwater. There was a potential break, obviously. Um, but it's one of those, you know, structures that doesn't stick out. I mean, it blends right in with the, the surrounding. Mm -hmm. um, Would but we be able to get a tour of that, Ray? Just so we could... Yeah, sure. yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. That would be good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty accessible right now. Um, we do... Part of, uh, I think, the phase... A approach to this is doing some tree work around that area. We just received a quote um, from a contractor that came out to go about that in a phased approach. If you look at it in like a part A, part B would be coming in from Pine Street, there's a, like a cattle gate right there. There's an easement that goes in. Um, our sewer line runs down that easement. Uh, and then this cross country section tees in there um, from the other section that's coming from Willie. So it's pretty accessible uh, to get some eyes on it, um, but, and it would be it would be good to see because what Mike's suggesting is the the two structures that are existing that were built to support the pipe that's there you know now. We assume we'd have to do some testing that has they have this integrity to be able to build off of with the I beam. So we utilize what's there, you know, raise the I beam on some pedestals of some sort. Um, and then, you know, drop down some hangers to give the pipe some support. support. Mm -hmm. The great part about that, when Mike brought this up, it also gives us protection overhead. So if a tree did come down, one that we didn't get to, or that mm has -hmm. got some protection now. So this is your number one priority, right? If, or is this... This is, a, this is a high priority. Yeah, it is. Like, is and it's if, if you had a choice, is this your number one priority? This is, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, from the sewer perspective right yeah. now, this has probably got, we get the most vulnerability right there. Okay. Uh, the first approach, like I said, is this tree work. And the contractor that came out, his recommendation was to wait till this winter when the ground was hard to get to this equipment without disturbing anything. Um, coming in from Pine up to uh, the first structure, um, he quoted five thousand dollars to, to clear that there's a couple big oaks right there that need to come down but that's also overgrown right that that right away that easement in there is, should be large enough to drive a truck in in case we ever had to do maintenance um, so that's pushing that all back and then the, the second approach or part b would be coming down from prospect uh, all the way down because we have an easement obviously on top of that be from the center line to the outskirts of that easement and opening that up all the way down to the other side of the bank, and there's a couple trees on that side of the leaning uh, that would include taking those as well. And that section, uh, he estimated 4,800. Okay. Is is your priority based on severity? Potential severity, mm -hmm. right? You know, Mike and I have talked about this, and we've batted around a lot, and it's been there for years. It hasn't posed any issues. Um, I think the the concern now is just the forest out there has grown, right? So the trees are a lot larger. And definitely when they were when the system was installed, um, and and the first approach was definitely to do some tree work, um, but it's <coughs> concerning from an engineering perspective and obviously from a district perspective that we've got this span that's not supported properly, uh, and if it was to break even on its own without a tree falling, it may go unnoticed for a while, right? Because it's it's not something that we check every day, you know, try to put eyes on it at least mm -hmm. monthly. Um, but if it just happened to time out wrong, it could pose uh, some pretty serious pollution. How did you arrive at your um, estimated construction and equipment costs? It was, this number right here is purely a planning level cost. We haven't even done really like no. the evaluation for, you know, what that specific thing would cost. Okay. Um, so uh, initially, I, I put forth uh, you know a small little evaluation study to say, all right, if we were to do it, this is the type of materials we would use. This is what we would spec for uh, type of crane. This is how we'd access it and look at all those pieces, and then we would develop a formal cost estimate. This is much more of a planning level estimate right now. Okay. <coughs> In the ballpark of 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, it, it's a reasonable thing for Ray to be able to do on the district side alone. You know, oftentimes it's, it comes through an engineering firm and we put it out to bid. It's, it's a small enough project where I, it'd be easy enough for me to say, you know, here's what you should use for IB materials, here's what you should use for pipe hangers, put it out to bid to a local contractor and, and handle it that way, which makes it a lot simpler. Could that be a not to succeed price? Uh, <laughs> You mean not to exceed like that that eighty thousand? Yes. Um, I mean, it all depends on what a contractor wants to bid on it, right? So if you put it out to bid and and it's a not to exceed price, um, you may not have any contractor come in. But I would say you know once we got once we got past that preliminary stage, we'd have a good idea. It's not a huge scope of a project. We'd have a really good idea of what it would cost. So this number had to come from somewhere, though. Did you at least kind of come up with materials estimates and then estimated labor costs based on current market rates? I did. I took, so I essentially took like a five to seven day okay. amount of time mm -hmm. for a crew that was between five and $7,500. Mm -hmm. And then I threw material costs on top of that. Okay. okay. That, I'm just wondering, like, yeah. you put a number in a hat and say, Oh, no, 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 yes. Yeah. Or uh, is there some basis for it? Yeah, okay. typically what we'll do with this type of project, because the materials are really the smallest part of the project, it's really the fact that you have to get a crane in there. It's all know, labor, right? Exactly, it's, it's mostly labor. Okay. Um, that's how I, I sort of came about that number, and I, I essentially inflated it by, you know, 30 to 40 percent, because right now it's, it's high-level planning. Okay. And to talk a little bit about the sort of the, the concept of risk, it's really, there's a consequence of risk, that you have to evaluate when you're looking at these projects. You know, some of these other projects, you know, they have a, a good handle on on how to, if something goes wrong, it's so obvious. Yeah, that they know, okay, this is this is what our action plan would be, or we would get an alarm at a pump station. This is one that's it's out in the middle of nowhere, like Grace said, and if something happens, you know, no, nobody really knows. Right. Um, and then all of a sudden, even further, it's, all right, how do we fix it in an emergency situation? It's a lot harder to rectify after the fact as opposed to being, um, you know, preparing for it, designing it, and then putting it in place. It's something that's a little harder to react on the fly to, to correct. Right. Yeah, and then, you know, the, the next project down the list there is the Picaris sewer line, um, Picaris Partridge Lane. And I don't even know if they're aware of our issues with that. So. Yeah, um, so I don't even know. Where is that? Do you know what Picaris is? No. Morning in progress. Okay, so it's uh, coming from the fire department yep. downtown. Yep. Uh, it's going to be your next right, okay. Picaris, right? And that crosses all the way over to Pine. Okay. And then uh, if you, as you come down Picaris, there's a sharp left-hand turn, and it goes into a quick right, and Partridge takes off. I don't know how to show you where it is here. Like it, it, um, it's a little probably all the time. We don't even know. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, uh, so this is the Karis. Yeah. Right here. That's the section. This is Partridge okay. Lane here. This is one of our water maps. So it doesn't have the sewer infrastructure drawn in, but our sewer infrastructure comes out of this uh, cul-de-sac, and this is what we're talking about right here. And this is essentially where uh, that exposed section is. Right, so this is all cross country. This actually is a manhole in this gentleman's backyard for uh, access before the 90s. Um, but this area on Partridge, and I could draw that out probably if you want to look at it a bit more. Um, sure. That's spe the specific area of Partridge. Can keep this? Of course you can, yeah. Right. Yep. Um, there was a repair done on the culvert uh, back in 2015, part of the culvert part on Partridge. It's a very deep gully there. I mean, I, I, don't, I estimate 40 feet, maybe. Um, well, obviously, our sewer infrastructure and our water infrastructure run through there. Um, we found uh, some reporting from Eastern Pipeline Service, who's a company we use for cleaning and jetting of, and camera work uh, on our sewer lines, but also some lining they've done for us in the past. And the document that we were looking at before we came <clears throat> is back in 14, they lined that section. So from the cul-de-sac uh, cul uh, manhole, heading up, back up Partridge to the next manhole was lined. Because there was found to be some cracks and roots that had grown in. Um, I don't know about the settling that we found, right? We had some 
CTV work done, and it's very obvious that there's a that the pipe is settled. Now it's been lined with a PVC of some sort. It didn't break, but it allowed it to settle the eight or ten inches that it did. Um, and we estimated about 18 feet settling, and it's a belly, right? So it doesn't settle and then settles further. It actually settles and then raises back up. So it creates this collection point. Uh, and back in was it 17. Uh, no, we're back up. No, it was actually so it was yeah, 2018, 2018 or 2019. There was okay. a backup. Yeah, we had a backup in that section. Um, that was in caused, a homeowner's. Mm, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was a collection system backup caused by oil and rags that led to a backup in a homeowner's basement. Well, um, there are a lot of homes here. I I can't picture this. I gotta go look. But Harris has a lot of homes. Yeah. 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 Partridge has six, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Partridge doesn't have a lot, but the Karis leading into that area has quite a few homes. Um, and obviously, knowing that this dip exists, uh, the next really high priority project, and you could, outside of the exposure issue and emergency repair on the cross country, uh, if that didn't exist, I'd really match these up both equally as priority, right? Um, so, quick question. I'm going to explain yeah. it. So, does everybody, everything runs from the Karis to Partridge and through that area you're talking about? Right. So, the okay. sewer runs, it's, it, yep. it's, yep. Uh, it starts basically at the almost the top of the Karis. Mm -hmm. Works its all the way, its way down to Partridge. Partridge goes over to Prospect and then cross countries to that intersection. Uh, from Willie and then over to Pine, and then it eventually works its way down to Boundary Street, way up the left station that pumps to the wastewater. Yep. But you said also that Stockdale comes over Stockdale, to this area, it the does, yeah. that's Stock problematic, also, right? Well, Stockdale branches in on the Karis at one point. It's probably two thirds of the way down before you hit Partridge. Okay. But there's still a lot of oh there's a lot of there's yeah, that, action that, in this area. That section makes up at least a third of our wastewater. Oh, I was going to say a third. At least, okay. and it, it could be a little higher than that. Um, and okay. so Didn't we have a, a culvert <coughs> repair project. We did in yeah. Partridge in 2019, and yeah. this mm -hmm. is where they found that. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was one in 2019 because we have 2015. I don't know if it was. Our document says 19, and that's a typo. The repair oh. from the notes from I found. The meeting was minutes of select board yeah. say 2015. Okay, maybe it was. Yeah. I recall. Yeah. It, yeah. Was it was crossed out and changed on this okay. paper. Um, yeah. yeah, I feel. So was that identified then? So I'm. It's prior to me, and I can't find documents on how that repair took place. I saw notes. I worked with George to see, you know, the notes from the contractor you know, the process of the bidding and the completion and all that, but there's no real information of the water and sewer district's involvement. They um, refused. Yeah, I saw one, it alluded to the fact of a conversation related to a water line and that the commissioners hadn't been responsive or something at that time, but I haven't seen it, didn't see anything about yeah, I mean, discussions I, of sewer or anything like that in the minutes. Right, I haven't been able to find documentation, but really what we've identified today because Mike and I look closely at the at the camera work and you know you could go at it at just replacing the sections about 20 feet mm -hmm. um, the whole line I think is a, just under 200 manhole to manhole if you're going to get a crew in it probably makes sense to just replace that whole line because it has been slip lined because of the issues found in 2015 which was infiltration of roots cracks and it's an old AC pipe if I remember right so it would be better while we're there and get a contractor in to just evaluate and go and hold the animal. Um, and then look at, obviously, where the culvert is, making sure that the compaction uh, is satisfactory so that we don't have another sag there. Um, there's no telling that we can see when the sag took place. What came first, right? The chicken or the egg. I don't know if it's due to the repair in the culvert, or if it was already there, you know. So that's really a moot point. At this this junction. But the backups hadn't didn't start from our knowledge until 2018. Correct. That I we know of. I have had a backup on my watch there, and I don't have any record uh, on any homeowner of a backup any time prior to that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I know that that section we had slip lined in 15 because there were many issues with that sewer line. So there is a chance that that had already sagged and you know when they line something they Mike was explaining it to me it's a nice smooth uh, transition so you know sometimes you can get away with bellies. Um, could it have sagged or settled more over the last few years? Potentially. Um, but I think the important thing is to get that replaced because it, it does pick up a big section right before it goes into that, you know, long section across country. So just just curiosity, when you're talking backup, are you talking like so like, I know it's are you talking are you talking like like hundreds of gallons or like hundreds of gallons. Hundreds of gallons. So what happened was at the property and that this took place is what we found is there there was plumbing in the basement. Um, our ordinance suggests, and not only suggests, but really shy away from and don't allow uh, drains in a basement below grade. Mm -hmm. Right, because that be, causes you to be vulnerable for a backup. Okay. If everything's grade and above, and we have a backup in the sewer system, you know, the goal is that the manhole, right, is going to be the point of least resistance, not somebody's basement that's going to fill their home. Uh, with, with two. Uh, what happened is there was a pipe in the wall that had just a fern co on it, right? So you have all this pressure that's built during the sewer system. This property was a very low point to begin with and then put it in the basement. It was just a recipe for disaster. So it blew that fern co off. Uh, and then once flow started, then it started coming through the toilet, through the, you know, through the shower in the basement. The fire department was uh, called out. They came in, did an amazing job of helping to clean up uh, while we were getting the, the backup straightened out. Um, and, you know, they're very much the, the, the property owner is, is concerned that this is going to happen again, right? Well, and there has been a threat, it threatened to happen again this past summer. Yeah, so we had, I was called out for a backup in the area, right? So I got there and there were already some manholes popped, and what know, does that mean? So the manholes, the sewer manholes, were already open, okay. and which is is definitely frowned upon from the district's perspective. It should be a district member, right, or the operator of the system yep. opening the system. Yep. Um, so that conversation. So the local was people were doing it. Yeah, because the concern was flush the toilet in the basement. It gurgled, which is the same thing that happened the last time it backed up. Um, so we've gone out to, to check. Well, when I got there, I was anticipating seeing flow out of the manhole or uh, the, the property owner telling me that there was backup in his basement. Yeah. So we met on the, on the corner of the Karras and Partridge, and there wasn't actually a backup. Um, it was slowed down dramatically. It was starting to back up, but it was still flowing through. Um, the potential was definitely there. Uh, we deployed a company to come out and back or jet the system, was able to clear it very quickly. Uh, and since we've actually hired them uh, to do quarterly cleaning in that area, just to do maintenance, mm -hmm. to make sure it doesn't happen. Uh, and the conversation's been had with the homeowner that, you know, not to open me, well, excuse me, just to call me. If there's any concern, if there's a gurg or whatever, just call me, I'll come out and identify the issue. So. You know, but then <clears throat> recently, when we did have the company come back yeah. out just a few months later. Yeah, so um, they did that cleaning, and then that was obviously emergency, in and out, just make sure it's clear. Um, I had them come back out to do a full clean, like from the cul-de-sac all the way up to the corner. Uh, there's a multi-family building up there, it spans about yeah. three of the manholes. And they cleaned that whole section for us. Um, wasn't a whole lot to report that time. But then we had contracted them to come out quarterly. So they, the next time they came out for like that quarterly cleaning was only half of a quarter, really, because they'd been out in between. And when he came out, he called me, and he's like, "Ray, he's like, this, this is bad." Like, I was just out, mm -hmm. say, six weeks ago, four weeks ago, cleaned it, and this is the same area, backed up, heavy grease, heavy rags. You know, he obviously I scheduled with the secretary, and he's like, you need to be on quarterly. So, well, we are on quarterly, just so you're aware. Um, he said, and, and even at that, you would want to keep an eye on it. So, okay. uh, it, uh, not to, can I ask no. you, 
you guys a question. Yeah. Just ignorance here. The funding that we have, yep. uh, is it meant for this? I, I, I don't, it, I really don't know. I'm just trying to figure out my own mind. Yes. To answer, to answer your question, I'm not sure yes. Do we normally do this? No. No. These this funds is, are unique. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, this yeah, is, is kind of unprecedented. Wide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, sorry. Totally so, unprecedented. So, in a real quick, in a real quick yeah. nutshell. Pardon me? In a real quick nutshell, the American Rescue Plan is allocated all across the country, but from New Hampshire, X amount of communities. I could say it's like, I don't know the exact number, but... Rollins was allocated, New Hampshire was allocated, we'll say, $4 billion. I don't know the exact number. And out of that, Rollins was allocated like $270,000, which we can use for anything that we consider, first of all, that affected the town from COVID. And then second of all, uh, water upgrades, okay. sewer upgrades. Um, I'm going to get off tangent a little bit, but I've been doing a little, when I go to different places and New England, I grab a local newspaper and read, mm -hmm. and every single town I've been reading about is, I don't want to say struggling, but trying to understand what they're going to use the money for. When I was in Groton on business, I stopped in Newport, and I grabbed the paper, and they have something like seven million, and they're planning on using about a million of the seven million allocated to do mm -hmm. water and sewage upgrades. Okay. That's a quick nutshell of it, okay. and what we need to do as a board is have a better understanding of, right, how we take the money in and, and allocate it. Allocate it. Um, and what you guys are doing, which it seems like great, is we just have to have really good documentation what we do mm -hmm. when we apply it to give the money back to the state or how that works. I'm not exactly sure yet, but we will. We'll know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, the other thing I just well, want, I'm on a tangent too. So just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. opinion, so there's been a discussion prior to this about and I don't know, Mark, you want to chip in at all, but uh, having the, possibly having the fire department hooked up to, to sewer, mm -hmm. has that ever been discussed with you guys? So Mike and I have discussed this. I, when he came out to look at the cross country, the CARES, I brought him over to the fire mm -hmm. department because that has been brought up. Yep. Um, and I know it sounds like there's a failing septic system over there, if I understand the, the issue. I don't know about failing, Ray, but it's... Old. It's old. Yeah. Okay. I just snuck in. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. It's, it's no, old, right? It's old. Right. We had it uh, pumped a few years ago, and, yep. and it's serviceable. Okay. So things are good to that point, but that's something that's in the CIP in the long range. Okay. Something we're looking at to do. So, okay. again, like you said, you're aware. So. Yeah, and I, I know George and I have talked about this too, and there's that the concern about oil separation too, right? Yep. Have some mm -hmm. sort of system to separate oil. Yeah, that's um, supposed to come down. And the good thing about this, yep. we know where the tank is. Right. <laughs> I know where the lid is on that's this one. It's not like yeah. water. It's, it's not, not like water, so. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, Mike and I discussed it, and I don't know if you can remember the conversation mm -hmm. enough to, to kind of give what your input was there. Um, I'll let you jump in on that, and then, you know, we can hash it out. But. Based on its distance from the existing collection mm -hmm. system, it's... Just not something that's cost effective to do on its own. Um, if you were looking at, you know, maybe looking at a big chunk to bring onto the system, then maybe you would look at it, but it's just too far outside of, of where the existing extents are. When we do that, it's oftentimes, you know, it's a payback. It's a cost payback. benefit. Can, you know, how many users can we guarantee are going to be on the system in five years or ten years? And then what's the cost of that? And when you're just looking at, at sewer or water, um, without like the complete streets, I and mean, then you end up having to dig up a lot of existing infrastructure and relay it, you know, just to have a, a smaller system, okay. individual system. No, it's it's good to know because you know if it's cost prohibitive right now, mm -hmm. and somewhere down the line there might be a bigger plan. I don't know. What's the water and some of the restrictions that we may see or make it grant other grants. Mm -hmm. and, right. and when we walk it, that's you know part of the concern I think from the payback is there's really no tie-ins from from the fire department to where they'd be tie-in, which is at the top of the carrots. Um, so it, it would most likely require a lift station um, because of the grade. Uh, and that becomes problematic if I'm right, Mike, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, just because of the size of it. Obviously, the, the fire department being a, you know, a, a part-time volunteer fire department, there's not a lot of flow most likely coming out of it. Um, 
so the cost to put in a new leach field with a, a proper separation system um, is probably way more affordable. Okay. And you know, we could nope. definitely nope. plan both of them out and look at them side by side. Uh, but the preliminary, you know, evaluation. I think you sold me not to. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and so, so let's just hypothetically speak for a second. Two hundred seventy thousand dollars would be enough for the next rescue plan. If you guys said you're one and two priority, you already got it listed, so you got one and two being pretty much would take care of the whole money with those two projects, and that's what you guys that happened. That's what you would push right. for, right? You wouldn't push to have it split between any other projects. Your big goal would be to get those two done. Correct. Yeah, just want to make sure. But that doesn't need any funding for any other projects. I know. I, I, I know. That's why they may have to pick what priority they Right. 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 That's right. The goal was to show, really. No, no. Uh, we, we said. Yeah. Well, right. And like we said, too, because we didn't know if you guys had any projects on. I realize that this can be a longer term plan because I know that I think you have until 2024 to. So right. Figure out the projects in 2026 to spend the money. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Do we get more allocations, or is this a <laughs> is this a one time? Well, let's, let's see. there's a lot going on right now. And I don't want to I don't want to speak for the government right now because there's a lot going on. So I don't know. Though I'm going to guess there'll be more funding available at some point. But that's right now we have the 270,000 people that came back on this plan, which, from what I can see so far. Just from what I've read, is a lot of that is being used for water and sewer. It's, it's being used in other areas, and if the towns are using it, then they gotta you gotta have good good examples of what they're using it for. And that's what that's what I've read. Um, and again, you know, Mike and I were talking about this when we met earlier. Um, neither of us are experts on how the money is being allocated, what the right path is. Right. Um, but it's fairly obvious that it was designed for water and sewer infrastructure, along with stormwater collection. We looked that up to verify and you know so it's like those three major utilities um, that they were looking for uh, potential upgrades. Uh, and one thing you know Chris Berg is uh, one of Mike's colleagues and he works with me on the water side and one thing that he really wanted me to stress tonight was whatever project that we end up doing or line up with at, at the bare minimum, if we could come to an agreement together, uh, is just knowing what our priority list is to work with the town in terms of where are you planning on doing any paving or you know stormwater repair. That's good. So point. that we could piggyback. I I so that we could do sections, fix they, all the utilities. You talk with Joyce pretty regularly. Right? Yes. I think it was a high. Yeah. So that that's something that may or may not yeah. come into fruition here, but I know you got ten thousand per way. Well, Possibly put away the tower and put panels. Mm -hmm. That's easily something that you guys could discuss and figure out what manholes mm -hmm. fall where and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, the only thing I'll say right now is I haven't seen any yet. I haven't seen any bond any department heads pushing to use any of the American Rescue Plans. It's very yeah. early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, um, the, the chief of police did allocate some money as well um, to that plan. Um, for staffing. So that is one of the things that the plan covers. It does cover it does. staffing. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's other areas, so I think we have to take a look at. Well, we probably have to have a discussion with the other departments yeah, to see have. if they're asked as well. But if we, and I'm not trying to put pressure on anyone here, but if we could have a sense of. Are you planning on having those discussions in 2021? Just because, like we said, I mean, for our cross-country sewer line, I mean, we do need to move somewhat on some of these projects, yes. and even if we have to start drafting <coughs> warrant articles surrounding some of them, if we aren't going to be able to do them, I know we don't have to decide tonight, but just to have a better sense of maybe your timeline as far as figuring I, this out would I be would like, I would like to see us three as a board have... Probably the timeline is maybe not quite this year, but within the next three months, having an idea of mm -hmm. what we're going to use that for and if we're going to use it. That's a reasonable uh, timeline. Yeah. So, would you, are you expecting that you would draft, do a warrant article um, for, say, your first priority this year if you don't have um, a decision out of one? 
Well, we'll just have to talk about it at our right. next meeting to have a better sense. And maybe we have to just focus on the tree work as like kind of a band aid, which is unfortunately how <laughs> often have to operate. Um, so I don't know, but like I said, it would be very helpful to have a sense of how much might get allocated to the water in sewer district. Um, I think we're, once we're done with the budget and everything, we're working on it right now. I think we'll have a better feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll just say, I would say, I mean, I can't speak for the other two buildings, but I would say, you know, the, the cross-country sewer line, so to speak, for 80000 you know, would probably be a lot more probable than the second one. Yes. Because right. you, you outlined it and you're taking up a large percentage of the sure. mm -hmm. Something to think about when you're going to push for one or the other. Yeah. So, um, can I ask a question about that? Of course you can. So, in terms of um, impact, um, um, I, I, I'm guessing that the Pine Street Willie project um, impacts more residents um, potentially, or benefits more residents than the Becaris Drive, the Partridge Lane culvert. I would say that the the impact and benefit for the cross country would be more environmental. Um, the when we're talking about Becaris and Partridge, we're talking about impact on our customers, right? back up in their homes. It's an environmental issue as well, but it could potentially be a safety hazard in their homes. So, How many homes um, would that impact? I'd have to go at the records and I can get a full um, list of customers along that section. Probably safe and just, I'm just going to throw a number out there of about somewhere around 150. No, for the Potter's Lane? No, for the whole for the whole line going through. So you got the Karras, your part of Stocktail, and your Potter's all feeding into that line that goes exactly. through. Well, and it depends on mm -hmm. what you mean Which, by impacted. I mean, not everybody's house is going to get the sewer backing up in it. There's that's, only a few no, select okay. homes no, no, no. that have the design. Right. Probably right, simplify you know. it to one because we already know where the weak link is. Yeah. Right? There's that one home that's already had a backup. Let me ask you the lowest point. Is there something you can do for that home versus doing all this? So. Yes and I no. I mean, is that an alternative? It's an alternative, but it's a, it's a sticky subject because when it comes to water and sewer infrastructure, okay. water, um, our infrastructure, our our responsibility ends at the curb stop. Oh. Okay, the homeowner owns the infrastructure from the curb stop in. Okay. For sewer, our responsibility ends at the collection system. So the homeowner owns their infrastructure all the way to where they tie in. Yeah. So yes, there could be a backflow preventer put on at the customer's cost. It wouldn't be something that would be uh, a cost that would be reasonable for us to bear because it would set a precedent for the rest of the community, for other areas, that we could potentially be liable to do everybody that's in right. point, right? So it's a, it's a tough liability. Situation is liability right? Roughly about our cost for that. But for the customer, keep himself like two grand or? Well, yeah. it's probably it's probably in that ballpark, right? You have an excavator for a day, you dig down. That the issue that you're going to run into is you're still not you're not solving like the well, water. You're not, you're not got that. It, we, we get the, I, I, I was just looking at your band data right. that we could use, and if we can't do this, in the short. Well, and also our quarterly that. jetting of that the line is, is our band aid right now. Mm -hmm. Maintaining the line and make sure we're ahead of it. Um, my concern about focusing on that one property. Yeah. Would be that we're just going to expose the next week, right? Because we're going to fix them, or it's going to be yeah, it's going to move, move someplace else. And then we're going to keep going. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, right. you got, I get that. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm trying to look for easy. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. Unfortunately, I there rarely people. are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the easy solution out there is uh, not the most cost effective, but it's. I think in terms of a payback in long term, it's the right decision is to repair that line. Um, it's in an area of our infrastructure that's the oldest, and it was, it was identified in 15 that that section alone had some issues. Right? Um, and it's not to say we fix that section and it doesn't create another issue, but it really moves some place. Yeah, it it good. Um, so I, I just got to, again, I want to get a grasp of the whole thing. So, curiosity. The pipe that's 45 feet long that's above ground. Let's mm -hmm. hypothetically say that to 
night at 10 o'clock and I fell and I broke it. But when would, when would you know? Could maybe, it be? The only way I would know um, without walking out there and putting eyes on it would be if the way it broke caused a backup. Right? And the, what I would know is when I got the first call from the next homeowner up, they had a backup. That right. Either so they, they weren't able to flush uh, because that whole line is out in the woods, so all the manholes are in the woods, right? So if they if it starts to overflow, it's going to overflow mm -hmm. the manholes. So it's going to be it'd be it be time, right? It'd be until somebody either smelled something horrible, noticed a sewer in their yard, yep. or couldn't flush the toilet. Okay. Because the section that is would break wouldn't affect anybody's ability to flow, right? Because it, it, it would way. just go in the river, mm -hmm. and everybody downstream would still be able to continue flushing. All right, so, I know. So, I don't, I don't want to hypothetically put death, but environmentally that would be obviously really bad, and we'd be left really bad to be out of the whole town. It'd be yeah. catastrophic. So, yeah. 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 Especially so, with the so nitrogen. It's hard to think about all of this. Um, board. Right, right. right. The, beyond the, the just the water here, Mr. And right. typically what ends up happening in those scenarios, depending on how bad it is, sometimes it can shed light on the system as a whole and have regulators come in to say, okay, well, what else is going on? Mm -hmm. And start sort of flipping from there, depending on the degree of uh, yeah, sure. yes. right. So can we schedule a time to see both of those? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know... I mean, I, won't, I don't mind like putting eyes on it either. I know exactly what the you're talking about. Yeah. And I'm surprised, I'm surprised I've never seen that bike. Never noticed it. Yeah, on times where that gate is, just walk in that yeah. little walkway and you'll see it. Yeah. Ray, could you do a Saturday? I can do whatever you need. Okay. Um, I can do no Saturday. Yeah, maybe we can. Uh, yeah, I can do this Saturday. I can do this Saturday, too. That's I don't know if I can do this Saturday. Okay, I can't, I can't do Sunday. I can do Saturday. And the, or the other side about that project is it's, it's small enough that I think it would be simple enough to develop a small little bid package mm -hmm. and maybe have hard prices mm -hmm. um, sooner rather than later. To, I think that would be a good move. To know, okay, this is what it's going to cost you to guarantee price, you know, as long as it's done before, right. you know, June 2022. This is the number. Yeah, I mean, we could use our little street. So you can lock it in pricing. Um, if we wrote it that way, we could. I mean, it could escalate costs on a contractor's end. Um, but at least then we would have, you know, we would have some gut feeling of, okay, people on the Yeah, I just want to know, is, is 80 grand enough? Yeah. Kind of deal or not, yeah. you know? So uh, when George and I walked this, Norm Giroux was in the process of doing the Willie Street pipe replacement. So he actually came out, looked at it, and put mm -hmm. eyes on it. Um, so he's aware of the situation. I could probably get a rough idea, just cost-wise. I know it's just one bid, but what, you know, proposing what we're talking about. In but it'll tell you what it's going to cost. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, yeah, I won't give him a number, but just have him give me a price on it. Right? Okay. A couple bids would be good. Of course, yeah. Um, I don't know if I can do this Saturday. Can we circle back and email you, mm -hmm. um, like, I'll probably know the next day or two. Yep. Um, it's a Saturday. We'll work on next Saturday. Is that okay? Yep. Yeah, it's R McNeil M C N E I L yep. at Rollinsford Water Sewer dot org. And I can give you my phone number too if if you prefer. Uh sure. 603 mm -hmm. 818-1568. And that's my cell. You can reach me there anytime. Thank you guys. Who was it? 603 what's the last time? 1568. Alright. I think I get everybody's number just in case. Okay. Something made. So, um, do you um, guys have any more questions? No, uh, we might have. I, I know there's a long list, but. I have one more thing everything. just before we can leave you alone. But so, like I said in my email, I did want to touch base quickly about the nitrogen permit and just your point of contact for that because. I know Caroline was the person that was attending various meetings and so on. I don't know if you guys have someone else now Maybe that... For right now, I'm looking for a contact for storm water and nitrogen. Okay. Okay. Because I recently had a woman from Dover reach out um, to me about the PTAP, like, training that's going on, which that's more of a non-point source, right? right? Mm -hmm. Which is more of a town thing, so she was asking me, like, you know, are you going to have representation at this meeting? And so, yeah, I was just wondering who... 
yeah. I can talk to you about, you know, yeah, there's would, a lot of meetings yeah, <laughs> related imagine. to this topic. Yeah, some, unfortunately, a lot of them are, like, during the day. During the it's, day. So it's we're gonna, difficult. We're gonna, we haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. Um, but speaking of nitrogen in storm water, I don't know if someone in the water, and so I know we have someone coming, but I don't know if you, one of you would like to be on or I so I spoke with um, Mike LaPointe about yep. a month ago. Mike's um, on it. Yeah, and I told him if needed, I could definitely attend. Okay. Um, obviously, we do have a lot of needs. We're going into budget season two, so, but if I can be there to be assistance, uh, to offer my assistance. Okay. We also have Kate, we'll who works at Water Sewer, is she, on that oh, committee as well, she's so there. she can help yep. be a link as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and just in case we had to call you in for specifics about it's, certain things that yeah. may come up. Well, the reason Mike and I had spoke is there was a question uh, about our permitting at the plant. And it wasn't clear if we had an FD's permit. Um, and that, we, I was able to clear that up with him real quick. Um, but yeah, he's, a good, he's been a good source for me because I'm getting in between. Yeah. Now and, then. Um, yeah. and then I believe, I believe, excuse me Mike, but your firm, and I think it was you about six months ago, gave us an update on Stonewall. Yes. Yeah, so that was you, right? Yep. Yeah. And thank you for that because you gave us, you gave the previous, these guys, I'm sorry, they, the previous board got a really good update what was going on with storm water mm -hmm. and how it affects Great Bay and the communities. Mm -hmm. um, so thanks for that. Yeah, sure. The other thing I just, just found out I'm changing the subject. So if we go to the other side of the river, it's my understanding like South Burke, the state of Maine pays for all their fees to take care of this, but on this side of the river, it's all the state of New Hampshire. Do you know if that's correct? So uh, the state of New Hampshire, it's all uh, precipitated from the NIFTES permit. So that's the interesting part with, uh, with Rollinsburg because the water sewer district is separate from the town, mm -hmm. whereas most of the other places around the Great Bay, they're all one. So these ARPA funds, it's an easy one for them to say, oh, we, we have to spend money on you know, all of these things. Let's just throw it at you know, water wastewater infrastructure because it's called coming out of the same pot. Yep, that's interesting. So in New Hampshire... Uh, EPA Region 1 out of Boston, which the NIPTES permits, whereas in Maine they have their own state agency that writes those NIPTES permits. Okay. So that's where a little bit of the division comes um, between how it's handled between the, between the states and the individual municipalities. Um, I'm not sure exactly what Maine is doing in terms of uh, their contribution to Great Bay. There's some push from EPA to have them step up to the plate, just as they've sort of forced uh, communities within the Great Bay watershed to do. Um, but I don't believe that's happened quite yet. I think it's only a matter of time before it does, though. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's an interesting one uh, when you start to look at those political boundaries and how it's handled from one side to another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in the middle of it. Just so you guys know. Right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right, we're all done. Yeah. 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 National Pollution Define the acronym. Elimination system. Okay. <laughs> so thank you. I didn't know the elimination system. What's the D for? Discharge. Discharge. Okay. Discharge. Discharge. Thank you for your time. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Mouthful. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to know what you're talking about. I, I, I'll just I have no idea what <laughs> you're saying. I'm glad that things have got better where it's calmed down. Yeah. That water and soil could go to yeah. previous times. So. Sure. It's good. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Paint on the driveway, so I think yeah, it's George. Yeah. 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 But there's a tea yeah. that comes yeah. off of the yeah. 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 that feeds only yeah. with yeah. its own gate. Yeah. And it's no yeah. longer the natural. I've been around the I just get customers like, What are you doing out here? You're up and down the road with my dogs. I'm going to finish up. Yeah. 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 It'll pop up one day. Tomorrow, I think I'm going to hone in on it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
there's not much more space to check. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good luck on that, Ray. <laughs> I just got my first beep. That was a half an hour ago. I, I, I responded a half hour ago. <laughs> I didn't see your name on the list. I'm available. <laughs> Well, there you go. See, it works. That's yeah. that's the goal. Of course, if you're sitting down here, downtown here, yeah. you, you'll receive it later than normal anyway. Because everything down here, and especially when you drop down the hole in the bottom mm -hmm. of the mills, it's even worse. Okay. When we started the Look at that. I do see your name on there. That's awesome. I respond. <laughs> Fine, guys, you all have your own laptops. Yeah, no, I should bring mine in. I'm gonna stop bringing mine in. Uh, actually, you don't have one. I do. Go to Tommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gotta be cleaned up, though. It's a little work. Did you get it to Tom LaBelle? Did you get it to Tom LaBelle? No. <clears throat> I don't even know Tom LaBelle. He's the person He's who will do it. Yeah. He takes care of all yeah. the IT. Uh, uh, yeah, I mentioned it to Chuck when we were here the other day. Yeah, I know. It just has everybody else's, it has somebody else's data on there and I just don't want to. Yeah. I don't think that's right. No. So. Oh, in other words, it wasn't clean before you got it. Right. That's what I'm saying. So I just leave it. I'll get it fixed when he gets back. Yep. Was there an agenda? Um, no. no, actually, this is the budget workshop um, that we're continuing on. Can we put Oops. Lorraine's letter into the mess? She must the fire department. I haven't seen it. 
We got it. We'll give I have this right here. Yeah. yeah. Would it be possible in the future, if you were in a private session, that you could have something up there besides the town of Rollingford symbol there with the music saying, okay, we're in private session, come back later? Or uh, um, when we were in private session, we probably um, would mute ourselves, so you wouldn't be able to hear us. But they want to know. Um, yes, yes, that's the norm. I didn't realize that looking at it, but I was watching the town of all that word symbol there for a long time and not knowing that we were in a private session. We were not in a private session, Dave. Um, we were having technical difficulties. Okay. Apologies. So, but the recording, was, the recording was on, so the meeting, um, well, I'm hoping that parts of it were. Sometimes you just gotta come in, Dave. Who are you speaking with? Um, Dave Jusco. Dave. Hi, Dave. Jusco. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, one second. I'm muting myself. Now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Actually, what, before we move on to the next part of it, yep. um, was there any public input on any of the conversations that you did here before we move on? Um, any any public input? No? Okay, great. Okay, we're moving on. Um, so, um, the, so the next thing on the agenda is um, budget planning. Yep, Mark, so, come right up. Let's get you out of here. Thank you. Um, so, because there was no increase in the police budget, I figured that, that we wouldn't necessarily have any input on that. Um, I think we're kind of focused on um, fire. On well, the the, the increases what? that we have and how we can manage them reasonably. So, um, we need to present to budget committee this week um, police, fire, and potentially town clerk. Um, although the town uh, we, we can is, alter that. We can move that out, right? Because they're on the calendar twice. Right, yeah. They're on the calendar for tomorrow night and also for the 27th. Okay. Um, so so Mark, we were able we did get some, some data um, um, on what has been paid to the firefighters um, this year, which is really helpful. Yeah, we did that in last week. Uh, yep. Well, well, Chuck gave us payroll. Yeah. Um, Please Uh, no. I don't think you gave us payroll, did you? Uh, information, payroll, and yeah. Uh, I didn't see. But anyways, um, so the, the one thing that, the correlation that I feel like we're missing, um, so we have how you calculate points now. And um, we know what the payroll is. Correlation that I think I'm missing is um, what those points are being used for for those quarters. Do you keep records of that? The points being used for. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody earns points for different right. activities. Right. Um, that there is there a document that you keep that there tells us which yeah, firefighter earned points for a certain activity. Yep. We have a log for that. Okay. Is that we have a log for the points they earn for calls, mm -hmm. and we have a log for called a time card mm -hmm. that they use for the other activities. Okay. Um, is that something you submit to Chuck? Mm, um, no. Okay. Never been asked for it before. Okay. But that, that is the two logs that we do keep, and that's only went over before. The other side where the time card is for people that are getting whether it's detailed pay or having to do station maintenance, vehicle maintenance, training. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like eight different categories that they can earn points on the time card side. And then like you said, time card plus calls equals total. Okay. Which goes into the pot, which is divided by the total. So time card is um, tracked separately from calls? Yep. Okay. Um, could, could we see that data? Could you yep. provide us? Do you do monthly logs or weekly logs? or how Daily. Daily. Okay. Um, but we really only add it up on a quarter when it comes to time for payroll. 
So you have an end of quarter report that puts all of that together? Because that's the only piece that I think I was missing in understanding the whole process. I think it's understanding um, what percentage of points go to calls versus the different activities. And that's hard to determine in a lot of ways because there's a lot of members that won't earn those points because they don't have the skills that I need to have them do it. Mm -hmm. And when they have to go and do certain chores and assignments and whatnot, it's usually assigned by myself or Sean yep. or Danny, the three chiefs, if we need somebody to go do something. So you're going to see some people that don't earn any points on time other than mm -hmm. the training that they're required to do. Right. But they may not have the outside detail. Right. And so it's, it's variable from member to member. Can I throw something out here? But like, since we have the presented by the next week, uh, this week, can I throw something out? Sure. You can say anything you want here. Good. I, I think what we should do, it's just me personally, um, and the salary thing is change marks from three to two, to two thousand, and change the teams from four thousand to three thousand, and then what I'd like to do is see something given back, and I mentioned it, out of equipment or radio equipment, that maybe we get five grand back, we kind of offset some of it. Out of repair, I think you had, I think you had $15,000 in there for radio equipment. Radio equipment, that's correct. And you used $495? Uh, I have, actually I have, I didn't bring it, shoot. Oh, um, I have the year to date expenditures. I haven't finished updating them yet, though. The last year I shot, shot, saw your four hundred ninety-five dollars. Right, that was through July. That I've been spent in that line. Is that yeah. what you were saying? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's all gone now. You have the latest one. I do. It's not here. Chuck printed me a copy, yeah. and I was in the process. My, my of point is, make next year ten versus fifteen. That was just my personal time. Um, he gave me a printed copy, unfortunately, and I left it on the counter, um, so I didn't bring it with me. I, I will have this updated probably tonight. I'm going to try to finish updating the year to date expenses. Um, so I can send out, I can certainly let you know where you're at, too. Um, so, what are we looking at right now? Are we looking at from Mark? Uh, well, what, what are we, I'm just trying to get with just what we're getting right now. Um, you mean through July 31st? Well, what, we, what we're thinking about proposing to the oh. budget committee. I, I, I proposed that he, they had uh, a proposed number in there for the chief for like $3,000. I say you cut it to two. They had one for the team for 4000 I say you cut it to three. And then I think, and this is just me, I, you can debate it all you want. Okay. And the other aspect was that I think there's money in there that we can take out of the radio repair, I think it was radio repair, it might have been uh, radio, radio, equip, radio, radio equipment. equipment. It was $15,000, let's make it 10000 next year versus, so it offsets it. I see. Yep, it was just my take. Um, so was basically, it? he's um, flattening out his ask for salaries and it isn't. Right. Mm -hmm. That way, we're giving raises to the people, and we're we're not increasing that portion. That mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. It just simplifies it. I mean, we can go through each one of these things and spend a lot of time. But mm -hmm. well, what does that mean um, to take five thousand out of radio equipment? Well, you remember why that's there? Yeah, to buy. Um, it was a four-year plan to mm -hmm. upgrade our chip equipment. Yeah. We were one year removed because of the need to repair the tank truck. So it just pushes it out a little further. So how many new radios do you have now? In the last, uh, we bought seven. And um, how many radios does 15,000 buy? Three. Three. Like five things. Okay. And you bought seven yet last year? Um, no, we bought seven total this year and last year. Not, we didn't buy any last year. What well, was no expenditures in 2020? What? Why is that? Because the money was used to repair the tank truck. Okay. They moved it over. Okay. Then when we 
came in and told them the issue we had, and there was nothing at the time that the, uh, we were able to get uh, any contingency or extra funding, so they said, find it in your budget. So that was the biggest piece that we could move, mm -hmm. and that's what we did, so we didn't buy any radio. So we may be able to, I'm just thinking, outside the box, because of COVID, some of the money um, used last year was for the tanker truck, but it was also used for other expenditures. You, something you may want to, we may want to just think about is you may be able to tap into some of the American Rescue Plan for some kind of funding. Could you look at the plan to see if they would fund any equipment? Mm -hmm. yeah. And there is communication equipment involved in that. Okay. And so, so I've been, I've been understanding that situation for, for a long time. And correct me when I speak out along that you got, they have two different types of, you probably know this better than I do, they have two different types of radio. One's analog, which is the old style. Mm -hmm. And the new style is digital. Style. digital. Yeah, so. That's in a nutshell. So the analog is hard to it's communicate with. You can't get it, can't repair it. Right. But I guess the quick question is, and I know when I see someone with an elevator, it doesn't work, but generally speaking, when you go out, you, is it fair to say your, your employees or the fire department generally has enough radios right now? Or they is do. That, okay. We have, we, have, okay. we have the Just radios we need right now. And we're, we're upgrading what we need to replace as we push those back and they go out of service. That's what this line was for. It was for you. Yep, well, I know I'm very familiar with Yeah, so we're getting there. We bought three radios. So like you were saying, Kim, if you hadn't gotten your total update yet, um, I submitted it the other day, and it's we bought three radios. Two of them at $6,000 a piece for 12, and the other one was three. The $6,000 radios that we've been purchasing, we don't need anymore. We've caught up with them. Those are the ones that we prioritized as we needed the most because they're used more for when we head over the river and go north because a lot of the main side of things that we respond to um, has different radio frequencies. Mm -hmm. So we've addressed that need. So <clears throat> as we move forward, we still need to get about eight more of the lesser uh, radios that, uh, that are still on our plane. So this isn't budget. This is just a question that I want to understand a couple times you talk about the door being open the fire department and then the, the letter that's going to be entered to the minutes it implied that you guys are being broken into so do you feel it was just I'm just I want to understand the situation do you feel it was just someone's error and the door was left open or you, do you feel that someone actually well, broke in because to me that's a big difference between Liability if someone's leaving, okay, someone screwed up and didn't do the door. Well, right. I never saw anything missing or out of place. No, I'm just saying, does it do it? The door didn't seem to be closed. Well, the door was about functioning for the okay. longest time. But I can, you know, I can put you to rest a little bit on that. Yeah, I can't even get repaired today. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure yeah. that it, it's not, the impression is you guys are broken into and I want to make sure that the residents don't believe that we're being. Oh. It's more of a security issue. I understand what you guys. More of a security issue in, in locking it, but it hasn't been the issues of theft or anything or breaking it. Okay. No, I, I would say that that's not a, hasn't yeah. been proven or anything that we have noticed. Okay. There's been somebody in there that should not have been. Perfect. But today we had submitted the PO a uh, month or so ago anyway for somebody to come and repair the doors, put the panic hardware in. Mm -hmm. That was finished today. He came in and did it, and that was step one leading to. The next step, which is a portion of Sean doing his uh, work on the cameras and the entry system. Yep. So step one done. Okay. When Sean gets back, he's out of town for a week of business. Um, he's going to be, after we approved it last week, you guys said it was good for him to go for that. He'll be starting on the rest of that. So our doors are, and the security is going to be improved immensely in the next month or so when uh, Sean gets his portion completed. Sorry, change the subject. No, 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 it's fine. So, no, I gave you an update. I was no, going to anyway. No, I, 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 I looked through this, and I, there's not a lot to cut. I mean, there's nothing to cut. No, I, I mean, let, I mean just to me, to me, if, if everybody's happy with that small adjustment. So I plugged in the numbers, yeah. the proposed numbers, and that brings the fire department <clears throat> increase to 1% from 6%. Okay, that's good. Um, <clears throat> So an increase in the budget of $2,007. Um, I'm personally fine with that. It's up to you guys. I'm okay with it, but you know, we have to have the chief be okay with it too, so. No. Mm -hmm. You're not? 
I think I can give you the five, but I think the members should get the, I should get the three and then should get the four. Because remember, we didn't have a raise. We haven't seen a raise in that fire department in two over two years. Everybody else in this community got a raise. So you can give us we were told it was going to be five by us, and it never did. Well, so you can give us the five by something else and still maintain the five. It's enough. still, but now let's talk about this because it's still, it's a 13% increase for you. It's a 5% increase for the salaries by the fire line. And that's so, so it's not at night right now. That's over a three year period. It had not for the last two years. Um, let me see. There was an increase in 2019 mm -hmm. um, for, for, your, for your salary. All right, let's go through it. 2019, well, 2018, um, you went from 7283. 2019 is the same. 2020 it went to 15,000, but you no longer collect points. Right. It wasn't an increase, it just shifted how it was compensated. So do you know, um, was it a lateral? Like if you look back at the points you earned over... It was pretty much exactly what I was earning from points. Okay. And when points were put on top of the salary, that was what the 15 is. <coughs> That's what I was at. Okay. So, so that hasn't changed. Well, without reflecting back on his salary, what you were paid for the last couple of years, we don't know how that equates. Um, but I'm just saying, so it is a 13% increase um, between last year and this year. And then <clears throat> for the salaries, in 2018 they were at 41000 In 2019 they went to 46000 In 2020 they went to 56000 And in 2021 they stayed at 56000 So. Um, only in 2020 did they not get an increase. And tw I'm sorry, they got an increase from 19 to 20, no increase from 20 to 21. So for one year they didn't get an increase, according to this budget. Unless you tell me Caroline's budget is wrong. I know there was the last two years, everybody in this community got a budget increase, salary increase, except for the fire department. Um, I don't doubt that, you know, because I did see that there were some adjustments. Um, I don't, I can't go back and look at, I can look at all of them actually, um, I can. So, police. I mean, I'm willing to give them five. So that's going to cover most of them. Mm -hmm. Very well. Police did not get an adjustment last year. sat here the other night and listened to all the arguments and I've heard for a lot of years that you have to pay these people to retain them. And, it looks like and the money that I've seen people time. getting just didn't equate to what the members of the fire department deserve. So it looks like highway might have got a 1% between 19 and 20. And I'm guessing at the numbers because I don't have the delta, but I see a slight increase. Police did not get an increase either. And then, um, nobody got an increase because we were told to level fund. That's what we were told to do the last two budget years. A level fund? A level fund. Because of COVID. And that was the direction that we were given. All you were on the you were, you were members at that point. And we level funded yep. for the last two years. So, what do you think, Paul? What do you have, Paul? Um, I think, I, well, we just discussed a few things, and Mike wants to keep the money for his employees, which I'm fine for, but he also said he could come up with five grand, not out of radio, but out of something else, and if he gives us a 1%, I can live with a 1% increase this mm -hmm. coming year, I can and I think, I think if I'm misunderstanding something, you, you can pull five out of something. You will come out of the video. Everybody will get the pay they're looking for. And I mean, I'd like to see level funding again, but I can only get 1% if you treat them. Yeah. So we'll leave it at that. You know, unfortunately, we can't. Uh, I know that the previous board made promises, but it's a different board now. No, um, I understand. But I think this is. I understand that. But I after sitting here the other night and listening to people getting 2 or $3 an hour raises, yeah, well, it's very hard for me to bring back to my members and, and explain it to them. You have 24 people. Police department had three people, and they can't hire people. 
And I, I think there's a difference. So why there. does that affect the fire department? Because um, if we don't retention, if we don't, same with me. I'm in a battle with everybody and every fire department around here to keep people. He really is. Yeah, no, I understand that. It's a serious mm -hmm. battle. I have three members of my department that walked in tonight and says, guess what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go work for the Lee Fire Department. Three of my better people. I don't have anybody to replace those with. The one thing that I can offer them is the fact that they're getting the support that I feel they need here so that we can help at least throw something back at them. So they listen to the same thing and they hear the amount of money that's getting thrown out to the guys. I hate, All right. I hate hey, let's, department let's, to department. Let's, let's stop this. Yeah, I think we need market data as well. I mean, we don't have market. The police gave us the whole statewide market data, you know, so we had something to go on. And that made a market data. We're going to be at the very bottom of the very list. Mm. I can tell you that right now. Well, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't put it on paper. Put it on paper. Um, so we don't have, the, you know, people, everybody's asking for market increases, and I get it. But we have nothing to go on unless we have something in front of us to make that decision. Right. So. Let's ask Mark to give us that. I say, and I think Paul agrees, that we stick with the raises that are in there. Because the other thing with my position is it's just not fire chief anymore. I do three jobs in this community now. Three. And that doesn't warrant what I'm asking for. I think it's very reasonable for what I ask for when you, you want market data. It's in the newspaper the other day. Look what they're paying Perry Plummer to be the fire chief in Rochester. $96 an hour. This job's no easier than mine. There's some market data right there. It's on the front page of the newspaper. Uh, I mean, I, just, I, I hate comparing department to department and us in our community and right. everywhere else. I'm telling you. So, so do me a favor then. Yes, sir. We got the five. Is it 2,000 more we can take out of something else? No. Huh? You looked at it, Jack. And I've gone through it too. And at this point right now, I mean, if you want to take it, you're going to take it, but all you're doing is pushing something else down the road. Mm -hmm. This is so thin at what we have right now um, that it just keeps pushing it out and, and exposing us in different things. That's why we've been here and talked about, you know, personal protective equipment, PPE, and all those kind of things. Yep. I mean, which one do you want me to take it out of? There's, there's nothing, I don't know. There's nothing else in there that I could there isn't much take there. it away. There's, there's no fat in this thing. Huh? So... I um, would propose that that we go with this increase, and like the other departments, we ask for job descriptions and performance reviews, which I think you said, well, you don't do performance reviews, but you have job descriptions, according to your manual. Um, and we collect market data in the next you know, round and see, you know, that's the best we can do, is to determine you know, where we fall compared to other communities of our size. On our calls, you know, there's some variables in there we really need to consider. I'm willing to do that, but let's let's put it back in it. Well, let's leave it where it is, right now, up with that assumption, which is the three and four. So let me see if that does. It's a 3% increase um, to their bottom line. Which is about five, was it about 40 on those? Uh, 4160. Okay. That's um, with taking money out of radio. Okay. Um, let's see. We'll go with that for now, and you know, I don't. I don't know what the budget was like. I don't know if any item the budget committee will have too much of a concern about it. I don't think they will either, but I, I, I look at the overall budget and. Yeah. yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me just speak my point on this. Yep, go ahead. I, I, if I look at it, I think it's uh, increased by 7.9%. Maybe a little bit more yes. when you start throwing the numbers in there. It was nine. But no, it's seven point nine on this one. Well, unless, originally the first budget was not reading it wrong. Okay, well, and I'm, I'm saying is at the end of the day we got to look at it and say where does a town need to be? You know, is it, it because that's not acceptable. 
Yeah, I agree. That's not right. acceptable. Right. Where, where do we need to be? Does it need to be four percent? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm new. No, I agree. Seven, I agree. Seven point nine. We have to get down. We, we can all leave right now. We all, that makes we, all, no sense. we all agree that seven point nine. We get down. Where do, where do we draw the line? I, I, I'm I, gonna say somewhere between one and two percent. We're at five. Yeah, we gotta we gotta reduce that. I'm saying we're gonna have to look at that, but I think you gotta put the whole thing together for us and look at the whole yep. enchilada. Right now we're just doing a piecemeal. I think you need to look at the whole thing, and then you gotta then we gotta look at how do we do it. Yeah. But right now, right now, if we slowly get a little bit down, right, and instead of being at when we when we get the big picture, instead of being at seven point nine or nine, which we were at, if we're at right nine, five, then we only get to get down to like three or two as opposed to right now. Right, right now, that's, that's right. right. That's the way I look at it. I mean, and I, and nothing's we're not picking on concrete right now. Yeah, we're not, not picking on, on anybody. We're not picking on one department over the other. Either. But you know. I don't even have to run in the spring if, if we do one with nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. No question about it. Yeah, nobody wants to see that. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I agree, Jack, with your um, approach about, you know, what do we think is a reasonable bottom line? Because right. that's what the budget committee looks at, too, the bottom line. Right. Um, so I think that we can propose this is where we're going, but in the end, if our goal is to get to a certain percentage on the bottom line, we may have to come back and adjust again. We might. Are we absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying is nothing is cast in concrete right now. Well, our, our assumption is that we're going in with this right now, but we're going to have to... We well, have to see what the budget can be done. Right. right. That hasn't happened yet, right? Right. What would, be, what would be ideal? Yeah. What would be ideal is what we have in the budget committee is very close. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, you know, last year, I'm speaking to a whole different board, but last year, you know, what was presented to the budget committee wasn't accepted. Was that level funding? It was slightly more than level funding. We went to um, the last year, the previous budget. The fall budget? Yeah, we mm -hmm. went through the fall, which was about, I don't know how to put it in front of me, but it was about 12. Yeah. Right. And so the other factor that you've got to consider, this is just the town, and, um, in terms of tax impact, we don't even know what the schools are. That's, uh, yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying. Is I, I, we, we gotta, I, I, I gotta look at the whole thing. Yeah. I can't look at it like this and yeah. well, say we're gonna cut here and cut there. I, mean, I, I think we can streamline it as much as we can. Then we look at it and then we gotta make hard decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. School's big too. Yeah. Is school usually bigger than town? Mm -hmm. I know. Otherwise, it's twice. Um, mm -hmm. Almost twice. No, it is twice. Well, almost yeah. twice. It's the county. I mean? The county's not technically. County. Though. County's a small piece, but that is part of the puzzle. Yeah. yeah. The county, the school, and the town. Yeah. I'll look at last year's. Um, the meal. Cool. Yep. So. So we can propose what we agree on to the budget committee. Well, we can tell them that this is what we're recommending. Right. But I think it's important that we, you as our upcoming ex officio for budget committee, also explain you know, what the thought process is in terms of bottom line impact. Agreed. I'll, I'll take care of that. I can say uh, we'll, 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 we'll do residents for those meetings? Budget yes. 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 Residents? I think it says they're residents. Now. Sure. Um, I think it is important to get feedback from the budget committee about what no, their thoughts are. Let's, well. let's sit and talk to them. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean. yep. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Unless you have any, do you have anything for us? I had a couple pieces of business I'd like to take care of. Okay, let's do it. It's early stuff, so. Short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Couple of couple of POs. All right. Um, it's kind of like one of them has to do with radios. <laughs> Buy you two. Only one. I gave you two. This one. Uh, let's do this one first. The last time we were in here, we had a PO written for um, uh, Burns to do their portion of the fire alarm at the mm -hmm. fire station. Okay. And the rest of that was going to go to Sean. Yep. But we put that on hold that other time, and we didn't submit the PO. But now that we had a discussion last week, and it was agreed upon, yep. this is the PO coming back that we never put in at that point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so it's number 2016 to Sean. It's again, under the warrant article, 
And the total on here is basically what's left over after Burns does theirs. It's 11,286. But as Sean sat here and told you last week, he's not going to come anywhere near that. He's going to be well under that. So whatever the warrant article was approved at 25, we're going to be coming in under that. Okay. Okay. In case that. And as I said, Sean is out of town until the end of the week. So he's already been in contact with me. We've already been ordering the stuff that he needs for his projects. So what is the um, the actual vendor name on it? Oh, uh, Sean Gooden. Sean Gooden. Do I sign it? So I'll, I'll make a... Oops. I'll, 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 I'll make a motion um, to approve PO 2016 to Sean Gooden for fire um, department security access and video cameras for $11,286. And we'll second that. So All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, wait, any discussion first? Sorry. Yep. Um, All in favor? Can I put on that one second discussion? <clears throat> um, is there any public input online regarding the <clears throat> fire department um, access and security system? I don't see any hands. Okay. Hands? Okay. Uh, anybody in? No? Nope. All okay. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And like I said, the first part of that was completed today by the door uh, repair company. <clears throat> That's been taken care of and we're getting on to the next step. Second PO is uh, 2020 two way communications. And this was for uh, we had a, one of the new radios that we bought uh, went into the tank truck because again the tank truck travels north <coughs> from the main, so it needed the upgraded radio. The radio from that vehicle was installed in the command car. So we have two radios in the back, so if we go to a scene, we can. We can work on a tactical frequency for fire ground, and we can also take care of our dispatch. So they came and did that, and uh, that was uh, $530. It's coming out of the uh, radio repair line, number 156, which I still had a couple of grand in when I checked it this evening. And there's the <coughs> invoice and PO for that. I'll make a motion for that. PO 2020 for two way radio for the amount of $530. Is um, there any discussion? Second. <coughs> just a quick question. What is it? It's just communicating to radios basically? There's two sets of radios in the back of the command car now. Okay. Do they come in? Well, basically, what would happen is if we're on the scene someplace, there's going to be one radio which is tactical, which is running all the units that are on scene, Got it. running that, and then we also have another one in case dispatch is calling us or getting information from people that were on scene. that before, because you only have one. Try, I, got it. Just try I could, to but I'd have to run to the front of the car and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and that's just Got not, yep. not the uh, smart way to manage an incident. Okay. I was hoping to really bring you one more tonight, but I didn't, but just to keep you updated. It's been a week since we had the repairs done to engine one where it had a failure of the uh, some of the pumping system. Right. I was hoping to get, that I would get the PO, get the invoice. I haven't gotten it yet, so I don't even know what that is. Um, and when you come in next time, bring that piece of pipe. But I'll bring it here. Oh, no, that's the one? No, just the one that you showed. Bring it in. Yeah, because I, I don't know if you've seen any of the equipment we've done. I keep all the pieces that rot out and are broken so you can... I can visually let you see what we're fighting on these vehicles, so okay. I'll bring you next time. Right. Um, so do we, anything else, Mark? That's all I have. Do we want to make a motion for the adjustments that we agreed on to bring forward to the budget committee, um, yes. at least in the interim until, as we'll work through the budget. So the changes, um, so um, I'll make a motion mm -hmm. that um, we accept the um, proposed Budget from the fire department minus the five thousand minus five thousand on the equipment line. Sorry, radio radio, rep radio line radio That's radio equipment radio, radio equipment, equipment line fifteen thousand dollars right no. reduce it by five thousand. Um, so that brings it to a bottom line increase of three percent for four thousand one hundred and sixty dollars. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so we're good for now. Thank you. See yeah, how it goes. I understand the for now portion of this. Thanks, Mark. The next few steps involved. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Mark.
Have a nice dinner. See you later. <laughs> Is it dinner time to sleep? I gotta go finish picking up the fire station. Remember you had the, we had the call. Oh my god. Thank you all. All right. All right. So, so what I'd like to do is um, plan to get in all, finish the yearly expenditures um, so we know um, where we are at, in a quarter three. And then what you'll see should be, it'll have um, the adjustments for the fire department in it um, and highway in it, which we agree on. Um, do we want to talk about the town clerk portion now in the event they really want to see that tomorrow? I mean, we can, and we might as well. But no, my one, I mean, yeah. my one Sounds great. I guess my, um, I guess we can't answer this question, but a big part of the puzzle is going to be the school board. The school. Always. Have they, have they presented anything to the budget? Mm -hmm. no, no. I don't know. I, no. Not yet. Uh, I can tell you they usually have. Yeah. They've got two guys. workshops coming up. So hopefully we can see their numbers sometime. Do we? We don't go to that, right? The school board meetings. Just oh, you can. Just budget. Anybody you could can. go to the school board meetings. Um, and honestly, it'll be on no, video. Thanks. Over, okay. the, no, no, over no. the years, I thought it should be more of a collaborative process, so we know the overall impact to the town. But they've always been very separate entities. Um, doesn't mean it has to stay that way. No, it's a lot of taxpayer money involved there. So, but uh, the school is. Um, Budget presentation is not until December 8th. Mm -hmm. oh, so we won't know the impact of that until when? Mm -hmm. That's December crazy. 8th. Well, we'll have to. Can we have a conversation with yeah. them? A meeting? Well, we usually don't, but I think we're going to need to. Yeah. We've got to know something. Can, can I just say, anytime you want to, you can request their, their budget information? Oh, you can? Under 91A. Um, so the final budgets... I get one every bu every meeting. The final budgets um, are for public hearings are scheduled for December 15th. Um, so we have some time, but I, I think it's important that... I'd just like to know it, roughly what it is. I mean, is it, you know, a percent and a half? Is it 5%? Is it 10%? What is it? Um, it's greatly... <clears throat> I'm going to speak when I was on budget, and you can check when you want, but it's greatly uh, controlled by the students and, you know. The number of students. Well, they're that, they're and if, like, all of a sudden. I think they're down to, like, 130 students. Now. All of a sudden, say they get There's 134 special. students say, there right now. Say all of a sudden, new, someone moves into the town, right, right. one special need um, yeah, kid, kid can change the yeah, budget yeah, by yeah, quite yeah. a bit. But they yeah. have a contingency fund. For one or two, yeah. 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 And they have a contingency for X amount of students, so. Correct. They're, no, it's they're November meeting and December meeting. They got workshops one hour before the regularly scheduled school board. Because they, uh, is that open to the public? Yes. I never yes. said it down. 134 students. From a, they were up around 160. Now, how many? How many go to Marshall? Um, about half. It's about half the student population goes to Marsh with the other half. This. Or it had been about half. But I don't know now that they're down to 40. Oh, 40 middle school, school and. Yeah. Hmm. It's, but it's split about half and half. Yeah. I think there's actually more going to Marshwood right now than there, than there is at the grade school. Between middle school and high school because you've got six. I like that that's going to go up because. They have less students in my room now, too. They get it. What's going to cost? Tuition's going to go up. There's a cap. There's a 10% cap. Is there? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's not that we can control right now, but it's going to be some interesting factors into our overall budget for sure. Yeah. Um, no, we can. What was, what was the budget last year? Year school? over year? I mean. School? No, yeah. in, in total. Would we. This town what was the increase year over year? Oh. If you look at last year. In the year before, I have to go look. Five, five million one hundred ninety-five thousand dollars, something like that. For what? That's oh, just school. No, the school is like five point eight. Yeah. Yeah. That's just school is five point eight. The town was point five. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Was a point oh, five eight. increase? Yeah, they wanted oh, you want they wanted three point five, but the budget committee said take three out, and they brought it down to point five percent. 
increase last year? It was, I got it. It's on the budget here. It's, um, um, and last year's was 5.8, but they also had almost $300,000 left over at the end of the year. Uh, it was increased by about uh, 970 minus 764. Couple hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Because there was, there was yeah, a couple hundred dollar increase from uh, 2020 to 2021. Because there was a big, there was a, I think it was the first year. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was one of those money balance the budget, but there was a big re reduction in cost because of the amount of students. I think was more than expected, but it was it definitely mm -hmm. was a cheaper. No, that was that was that was because the t school gave back a lot more money. And that's why our taxes went down. Yeah, infused a couple yeah, they gave us this year they're expecting to give back. They haven't come up with a fig, a whole figure yet, but they're estimating about one eighty. Something like that. One twenty five. One twenty five. Over a hundred thousand dollars they plan to give back to the to the town. Well, so, not give back, but not ask for. No, I don't. Yeah. So, so last year it was an increase of about two hundred and mm -hmm. yeah. about two hundred dollars, we'll say roughly. This year, as it stands with the budget we have so far, <clears throat> with the changes for highway, transfer station, and um, and fire, um, we're looking at an increase of one hundred and twenty-four thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. So far. But we And the tax the and the tax impact impacts three twenty five. Is what? Three twenty five now. Three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for every dollar. Maybe a little more. Mm, when did the tax base change? When did that change? Because it used to be two twenty. It was about two twenty. It was two sixty yeah, five. Three hundred three twenty five last year. Yeah, was it three twenty five? Oh, Caroline actually, gave us the numbers I last year with three twenty five. It's in the town book. I think it's here too. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. Tax impact. Uh, actually, I have to look at these numbers because then we'll jump in the town clerk. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to look at that. But because uh, there is some, some uh, tax impact numbers here, but. Um, sort of one thing I and I haven't changed my opinion, but one thing I'll say is I think Dan's doing a great job, but because of his limited experience, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be cautious on the on the raise this year. So he's proposing a 12 percent increase. Yeah. Um, I have it right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I agree. I mean, Paul, I don't think he's got a year of experience yet, um, and. In, and yes, I, mentioned, right. I mentioned, you know, uh, uh, Kate had 20 years mm -hmm. of experience and we paid her um, at 25000 And again, no market data. We don't really know, you know, what the range is right now for a town clerk who works part-time with that level of experience. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, data right now is all over the place because of job salaries. It's like... If you did the same thing a year and a half, two years ago, I'm sure be different. a town clerk in any town would be quite a bit lower paid than they are thrown into right now. Yeah, I mean, I think we can certainly get, the state has a lot of data online. Um, it's just taking a little bit of time to dig it out. Oh, you know what, and I'll see if I can... Because that's what John did. He got Kate did, state wages. Kate did supply a lot of that information, too, about, she supplied about mm -hmm. 15, 20 towns, same size as well, so mm -hmm. what the town clerk made. <clears throat> Um, I, I agree. I mean, I feel like, you know, a cost of living, um, you know, is reasonable. Right. Um, yeah, I think we should do that. Mm -hmm. Cost of living is reasonable, and, and we can talk, I mean, you know, obviously 2, two or 3 percent. Mm -hmm. I would get, talk, I mean, if I got 12 percent raise in one year, I would be, like, ecstatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, everybody's going to ask. I know. I mean, that's no, I mean, that's the norm. I mean, yes. no, and I, and yeah. again, he's he's got some comments. He he's, he he's, he's doing a good job. I talked to him today, actually. Good. I think he's doing a good job, and I think he's very responsible. Um, 
the only thing I'll say, and I'm not blaming the town clerk, but I think the situation with CNJ should have been resolved. handled quicker and been resolved quicker and not dragged to the slick board twice. But well, he's and, going, you know, he, I'm, I'm, he, it, it, it goes to his newness. He's going, he, he went for training for this, and this is what they told him in training. I mean, I mean, so there's no judgment. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. There's no experience. So, so policy. Right. So I'm going to follow. I'm going to see what you guys do think. But I wasn't planning on doing this, and I'm probably not going to. But do you think it's worth reaching out to Mr. Jalba to explain the situation or just let it be? I think. I think. I don't even know. I mean, um, so I, I don't even know. I know who he is. I believe that. I think somebody should contact you. Know, yep. You dealt with. Yeah. I think I think you should have a conversation because if you don't personally, yeah, you know, it makes a big difference. I mean, me call, I can call him. He may not. Yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. No, if you call him, I think it, it, it's worth discussing because we don't want to lose his business. I don't think mm -hmm. we will, but I don't know that, yeah. so we'll just make sure. So can we talk through the town clerk's budget a little bit more? Because he's still at a 13% increase. Yes, um, yes, I can so, I get my nose over here. Um, so he's currently, so if we were to do a 2% cost of living, it brings I was thinking 3, but I, I have 3. Okay, three. so we're at 13% with 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so currently that department increases 14, a fourteen percent increase um, of four thousand eight hundred and thirty-two dollars, um, and but it's because we have three elections. That's a, a big chunk of it, and also um, they have interware software development. So online um, services are being proposed because I guess they have the they already software. have them. Yeah, they, have, they already have the software. Um, so I, I don't know if this is a maintenance um, cost or not, mm -hmm. but that is, it is, sorry. Oh. I think it is. Yes. Um, so, so how much was it? $1,632. Yeah, that's, that's well, an annual maintenance. So the proposed, last year's proposed, actually last year's approved appropriation for that was $895. This year it's proposed at $2527. So that's a big chunk of that 14%. I'm not sure why that is, though. I know what you're saying, but are we, I think they didn't have talking, everything online last year. We're talking online for auto registration, right? Uh, yeah, and dog dog um, licensing. So it's it's basically online services is the increase there. That's the, the biggest chunk. Well, that's new software, right? right. That's new they, software. I, and I believe in last maintenance. year's budget, they all weren't. They were new last, and so this is the first year they will get the maintenance yeah. on so two of them. Yes. Because I think they got two I new ones. I just said ones. for the whole year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because oh, so last been, year it wouldn't have been for um, um, So, I mean, I think that definitely adds a value to our town, and I'm not adverse to that at all. Um, well, I think once you get it online and once people get used to it, it's going to make it a lot easier for everybody. Yeah, agree. So, um, so the three percent increase, um, and um, so in three elections this year, um, and also the new online um, services, um, that's a four thousand eight hundred thirty-two dollar increase to the budget. So, I guess and I'm going by memory, but I guess this. Online fee is going to be every year of this mm -hmm. like twelve to fourteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, we'd have to get that from Dan. I don't know. Yeah. Sure. Uh, usually, it's in the annual. Well, actually, you know what? It might be in the details. For that. But I do remember the previous board meeting being on it. We it was actually, I think, originally. What do we, we pay? Originally, really pushed by the previous town clerk to get the software. And there was no mention of yearly fees. What line item is that? Um, 
So let's see. I don't see um, details around that part of it. I see <clears throat> some details about online tax cards um, as part of the IT cost, but it doesn't give the cost for uh, for the town clerk system. That's something well, we can ask Dan. I go to say it's a it's a yearly fee, but I thought it was if we were to choose that, say. 24 hours a week, as opposed to someone spent going 40 hours a week and may not be as qualified, as qualified or as efficient, and then you're getting, you know, somebody working 40 hours a week doing less than someone at 24, because right. 20, you know, a person at 24 is just much more efficient. Right. You know, and that's very possible. So. Yeah. yeah, it is. Thank you, Um. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. I think uh, we were talking about uh, deputies and stuff. Yes. In my conversations with Chuck, I, 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 to say, I, I think he's inundated with everything he has going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But maybe we could look at putting somebody else in that deputy role. You know, you know if your wife doesn't want to do it, or yeah. she does, or yeah, that's you yeah. Know, but, but, I, but I think we well, maybe take that away from him, mm -hmm. so so we can manage more of what what we have out there. Specifically yeah. during these times when we don't yeah. have coverage for time administrator. Right. Um, I'm concerned about it, and, and I think we. The other thing um, that came up, and I think Selma was there as well, is that he's concerned in January when they have the audits and everything that he's not going to be able to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So we definitely got to get somebody in here. I agree. Now I, I agree that in the next two months is, yeah. is we should have someone in the spot by the first week. I agree with that. Hopefully sooner. Yeah. So can I step back? Do we want to have Tom come in, or do we want to ride it out for a little bit? Um, agenda items. Why don't we ride it out for a week? Okay. With Tom. There's okay. nothing really specific we're going to do right now. Well, Unless, is yeah. there anything we need done right now? Not that I know of. Okay. We'll ride uh, out. Well, there's a couple outstanding things. One is I still haven't heard back from P. Gagnon on a service contract for our heating systems. Okay. Um, and actually, uh, John Rest, which was supposed to meet with Moriarty Electric about the generator uh, today. I'll have to follow up for that. So those are a couple of things. If, if you if you know if we want to have Tom coming at just at the beginning, just have a quick this is where we're at and you know I mean, we we're not expecting a whole bunch of hours for you to fill, but we're gonna tap on you when we can, like we said to him. Yeah. Well I think we could have him come in and see if he's a we do it on an as needed basis. And we could actually fund that mm -hmm. at a different as the a temporary facilities director I'm thinking, because there's money in a different line item. Perhaps at a different rate, you know. Right. Um, that's something to consider as well. Do we want to hold on? I mean, we'll probably have a pretty good agenda for this coming Monday. Do we want to hold on that? Yeah. Give that some hold on. Yep. Okay. Um, do we want to invite Tuesday. the town clerk and the tax collector in to have a discussion about deputies um, and see what the willingness is um, <clears throat> to do that? And if not, then we plan for potentially. Um, like that temporarily, because the, th the thing to consider is, um, let's see, I think the town clerk is three years, correct? Three years, okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I think we need to solve this before um, long. We definitely have to do something. I agree. So I'm thinking, do we want to put on an agenda to have come in and have a conversation with them and, you know, kind of move the conversation forward a little bit more? Well, I would, what I suggest is, have a, I mean, talk, not as a board, like two of you together, because you have to do it independently. Um, Let, let's talk to them. Talk to them. Well, right. We'd have to all have I, to I plan on, I plan on, uh, when Chuck gets back, having a discussion with him. Well, uh, he hasn't had any time to do anything for Dan. I know that. I, 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 I know that for a fact. So I don't know if Dan is like in need of the service. No, Dan's, Dan told me he's okay right now. Yeah. I think it's more of a coverage. It is. It's just coverage, but somebody's got to learn those systems. Right. You know, if he's back for them, that's that's the problem, right? But, you know, why don't we? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't we delay? Can I just tell you one yeah. thing? Yeah. Um, so I know that um, you, Kate Nesman, is working as a per diem counselor. We might be able to use those services temporarily if everybody's a willing party. And if we had a need, because towns do this, 
um, they call if they know that somebody's going to be on vacation for a period of time, they use per diem services. Mm. So that's um, not a bad idea. That's what you're I know um, Kate has filled in for some of the other towns around here. Interesting. Something to think about. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Did they okay. do that for town administrator? So do we want to at least have a conversation? Did they do that for town administrator? <laughs> I'm sure they do. Actually, yeah. um, so do we at least want to have a conversation, get a feel for what um, Dan and Andrea are thinking? Because if they're not thinking that at all, then maybe we need to entertain the option of a per diem. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm fine with that. I'm and the other, the other thing is, I think, yeah, I sat down and actually had a little talk with Chuck last week, too. He just seems like he's so busy in what he's doing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make logical sense for me. That's right. That's, I mean, the only and other I, I, But I have not had a conversation with him about this either. That's, so the other thing to consider, he's yes. only four days a week. You know, that you could make it a full-time administrative assistant position. Um, and that's the other thing you can consider. You, if you, you could did, flip it. You, if you did a part-time TA, you know, for 24 hours, and you made the administrative assistant full time. What does that mean? Um, I mean Something to think about. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. somebody's going to get benefits, either the TA or, um, and well, actually, you know, I think it's 16 hours now. It depends how we brought in, you know, to me down the measure if we brought him part time. There's a lot of things to think about, really. There is. Um, and you'd have to be sure he was willing to give up his other. One thing I'll say, Chuck. Chuck brought up some good points. Um, that we as a board got to act on is his, his discussion with me, we talked about a lot of job things and stuff, but his discussion with me was that he felt that we need to act quicker than, we need to act sooner than later mm -hmm. on filling the town administrative position because he feels the residents are the ones that suffer mm -hmm. right, because they're not getting their everyday services. Mm -hmm. services. Right, and, I, and they can call up and talk to them and talk to her. So they don't have that. So, um, all right, so I'm adding you. to the agenda those two things, um, the existing agenda, and I have to, let me, just give me a minute um, to go through and make sure we didn't, um, there wasn't anything else in the email that we have to deal with, yep. but do you want to open it up to public input while I do that? Sure. Okay. Be before you do that, what do we got left to do on the budgets? What are the other things we got to look at? Uh, we just still have um, executive, what um, else? yep, let's see, this, we have executive, I mean, not that we need to do it, I just, Actually, I want to go based on their, well, recreation isn't even on the schedule of the budget committee, which I need to mention to them. Um, and then you have town, well, actually, no, um, executive office, town. So the town means executive office, um, financial administration, reevaluation, personal administration, planning, zoning, government buildings. Um, so it's basically all the other um, components. components of the budget minus police, highway, fire, town clerk. So where do we get like the planning stuff? And everything? What is that? How, how does that happen? It, it's in the budget already. So budget is, is that, as that's, so who makes that up though? Who creates that? Uh, the departments do. So I think Sarah McLaughlin mm -hmm. would be the planning person. Right. Mm -hmm. Planning and zoning is Sarah. Yeah, planning and zoning. Um, and actually, she does. I mean, do we meet with them or do we just accept it? That, that's well, kind of where I'm No, we can, we can definitely out. bring um, them back in because she was one of the ones where she's a clerk position that's at 1224 an hour and asked to be moved to 16. Um, and I think my question in some ways said that there's a lot of prep time, but the hours is, you know, um, it's 100, I think, I think it was 136 hours a year um, that it's budgeted for. So we can certainly so what it, go through those again for me. Yeah. About a thousand dollars. Um, so you have executive office, right. um, which is basically town clerk. I'm sorry, town administrator, Soundly and Chuck. Okay. Um, you have um, financial administration, which is tax collector and treasurer, and Paula Woolley. And then you have reevaluation, um, which that it is. is the, the treasurer a stipend job? I, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that's level funded this year. Um, that's an elective position. 
and then reevaluation, re personal administration. Reevaluation. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, um, there's reevaluation. Who does that? Um, it's it's um, Avatar does that service for us, and the budget is looks like there's a zero percent increase from year to year. So that's flat. Okay. Um, I think. I'm really focused on the ones that are not flat and what we need to do, if anything, to you know, make adjustments. So, so planning is a 5% increase, but it's $745. Yeah, that's planning and zoning. Yeah, that's pretty small. Yeah. Um, and so then government buildings is 18% increase. What is? Government buildings. But a lot of that is the water and sewer adjustments. Oh, no. yeah. And we have insurance. That's insurance we can't do anything about. Regional associations is flat. Yeah, um, that's good. Police, fire, highway. Building inspector is flat. Um, street lighting is flat. Health is flat. Animal control is a negative because we don't have an animal. Oh, sorry, actually, we don't need one. <laughs> no, I gotta, I gotta talk to John about it. Okay. Oh, you did talk to him about it? Yeah. Okay. There was an email from the resident. Um, general Park assistance is flat. Uh, Parks and Rec is a 105% increase, um, a $41,000 increase. So that one's pretty significant. Uh, library is is a, like a 1% increase. And then, yeah. And the Parks and Recreation, I think one of that, part of that was. I can't know the big item. One was seven thousand for a skate rink. Yeah, but then it was oh, there was a rec director. To a person too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. rec director. Yeah. But they have generating revenue offsets too. We we can't give guidance, right? I, I can, you guidance. can you give her guidance? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Along the rec. Yeah, uh, the rec. Uh, I mean, just, what do you want to give her guidance on? I mean, it. Well, I, I think. How to look at it because we wanted. Yeah. To, I think we, my, we want my to look position about. about my position about adding the position is that it needs a plan. You know? Right. That's kind of where I was going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I can talk to you about that. Yeah, so, yeah. So there, yeah, I know what you mean. So their, their hope is you get a rec director, mm -hmm. and that's the plan, that the rec director will make the plan. Create everything, but you got you to have a plan. You got to, this got to be a baseline. Kind of like a business plan. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so we have a few things, but a lot of them, um, so those kind of fall under town. Okay. That's so we have no meeting coming up. I got to check since I think I'm planning. Tuesday. I don't think there is. I'll tell you the meeting week. schedule is coming up, too. Okay. That is, um, it's the first of it. Early in the month, is it? So we have, um, on the, oh, well, for select, so budget presentation, um, next budget presentation is this Wednesday, yep. um, Police Fire Town. The next budget presentation is October 27th, and that's Library Cemetery Town Clerk. Which um, is you. That's which Monday. Town, Clerk, <laughs> Town Clerk is here twice. It's in two meetings. Um, so, oh, you know what it is? I bet you it's um, not Town Clerk, but Town, the Town Budget. So since we haven't prepared the town budget, the rest of the town budget, we'll plan to do that on the 27th. That means we're going to have to get rid, um, get through the rest of those. We can do that. Yeah. So we have, do we have a scheduled, us have a scheduled, that's like whatever our scheduled budget coming up, and that's going to be sometime probably next week? Um, so our next, I'm we got sorry. Tuesday. We got uh, Tuesday as a regular meeting. Yeah. Do we have anything else for us as a select board budget, scheduled for budget, and should we? We probably should. Another, um, Let's see if we can bang away well, some of this. Um, we, we haven't posted it. I can work with Tia to post if we wanted to do another day next week. Mm -hmm. um, or something. Yeah, I can Wednesday. 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 Wednesday short for an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. I'm free Wednesdays now. We we don't don't budget no, budget we're budget golf. Budget. Let me just check the calendar. Golf leagues off. Um, so we have. So the 12th is the board. Uh, the wrong, oh, the school board meeting is the 14th. That's not fair, though. So, yeah, so we have the availability to meet here next week. 
Um, I just need to let T know. Why do we try and do that? So Tuesday and Wednesday, not late. So the 5th and the 6th? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, wait, wait, no, 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 that's no, what no, we're no, on no, right now, is the 5th and 6th. 12th and 13th. 12th and 13th. 12th and 13th. Because the Monday's the holiday. Well, yeah. so just so you know, yep. um, we have a regular select board meeting on the 12th. Yep. And then we don't have another one until the 26th. So in theory, we could use the 18th as a planning session if we wanted. I'm good either way. I, so am I. I my, my thing would be, if we can do it next week, let's do it. Okay, let's do it next Wednesday. And, and try and get us, the more we can crunch this up, yeah. that, that gives us a little bit of latitude okay. on the back end if we need it. All right, so Tuesday, Wednesday, and Wednesday, Wednesday. Right. both meetings at 6. Right. All right. So I'll um, email Tia to post that. Because Chuck usually does the posting when he's on the phone. Um, how, how is that going? Yeah. Any issues? I have the welder's one. It hasn't rang yet, so that's good. Uh, he said, um, well, you probably talked to him. But when I talked to him on Thursday, he was hoping that he took care of that case. Yep. So on uh, 13th, right? So uh, 10 13. At 6 p.m. Okay. okay, I'll do that. Um, okay, I got my list to do. So if we leave these checks in the, uh, we leave them right there. Yep. Uh, yep. They're all set. Dan can get in there. Right? Do you know how to lock the door? Yep, I do. So I'll let I Dan know. Fills the check and I emailed Paula about it. So. I'll let Dan know that Phil's checks in there if he comes and gets it. I know he's looking for it. Oh. Um. Actually, we can leave it in the town box office. Yeah. Yeah, we can leave it there too. Okay. I don't, I don't know if we can get in there or not. I mean, into that room. Oh. But Andrea oh. can. All right. I don't know how Andrea's going to let him know the situation. Phil's coming. I'll call him. Wait, six o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to. I mean, I'm not too worried about it, but they don't start until both don't start until one tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let me just. Um, All right. Well, I know I can't get that. Go over the to dos. So um, I'll email George um, about removing the signs for <coughs> Main Street, and then. Well, those people seem very happy. Huh? Yeah. Um, been almost a year of pain, um, and painting our manhole cover, and then I, mean, I did make a note about policy definition for C and J. That's not something on update right now, but I wanted to make sure we get it out there. Um, I need to e um, let everybody know if we can do a Saturday tour. Of um, Pine Street, Willie Street, yep. and Vicaris. And I, I'm a, I can check it out on my own if I need to, because I did a couple Saturdays. I put it up on the coming up the next two weeks. Oh, yeah. um, and then um, I'll email Dan about the annual cost for um, the interwear um, system, as well as um, whether it integrates with our website. Um, oh, uh, I have to remember on Wednesday to let. Um, John know that they don't have a recreation um, presentation. And then um, update the agenda to include the post issuance expenditure of funds, um, invite Paula to that, uh, invite Dan and Andrea to the next um, regular meeting to discuss deputies first and then potentially for DM option. Um, and then email Tia about a meeting on 10 13. Okay, so I get nothing to do on that so far. Would you like to email to you? You you have planning tomorrow. I do. Planning tomorrow. So I, I'm willing to take if there's an, I'll I can summarize this in email. If anybody no. wants to take some stuff off my plate, I'm happy to do that. Well, I just feel like you got a lot and me and Jack. And do the budget. Right. Me and Jack are getting out of here with nothing. So how about I summarize the open sure. uh, um to do's and tell me what you want me to go. Okay. Right. Plan tomorrow seven. So what is this? Yes. All right. Um, so, town clerk uh, questions about the online system <clears throat> okay. integration with the website. Uh, I can do that with I can talk to you about that. Okay. So, I, if you want, I can email just to make sure it's all Why good. don't you do that? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, follow no, that. Okay. Good. Um, the, um, I can email to you. Um, Jack, do you want to email? Um, Andrea, Dan, to talk about coming in for sure. a regular meeting um, to discuss deputies. And that's yes. what day? Um, next regular meeting, which is the 12th. Cool. Yep. Right, so, Jack, Boyle. Got it. Um, what 
Um, Paul, do you want to email George um, to remove the signs and paint the manhole yeah. cover? Okay. Yep. Okay, great. I got an email anyway, so I will not write it down. Okay. No, I'll, I'll yep. summarize yep. this too. Thanks. And then, um, I'll, um, Jack, do you want to email Paula and invite her to I don't even know who she is. Oh, Paula <laughs> Willie. She's the treasurer. <laughs> I'll make, I'll, the treasurer. I'll make sure to include her email. Yeah. Okay, great. And I think that's good, you guys. Um, I'll take care of Tia, take care of the budget, the agenda. And so I'll summarize what we are Perfect. doing. Okay. Yep. The other thing so I'm we want Paula to come in and talk about what? The, yes. bond, the post issuance form that needs to be um, signed by the select board. I think it's, if she's a owner of it, we can get it done right there. But I'd like to know what expenditures um, we're signing on. Yep. Like, I want to understand it better. Yeah, so. you do. It's a, big, it's a big number, too. So we need to just have a little bit of background on it, Jack, and okay. um, what, we're, what we're signing off to is important. Okay, good. You guys took two things. Each took two things. Perfect. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to probably try to do, this is separate from budget, but I have talked to Curtis Wright, civil, civil engineer from Curtis Wright. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Stevens was the general talk to him. Um, just so you know, it hasn't been dropped. We've talked about the transfer station, what needs to be done, if anything needs to be done, about it. Oh, right. You know, being transferred over the rack, maybe not. Rack land being transferred over for the use of user and to transfer station maybe not properly um, but it's not like it's not pressing unless we get audited it, but it's it's on the radar yeah um so once things come up a little bit with the budget stuff we're we'll we'll working probably. on that stuff yeah, yeah exactly okay. all, right. all right let me just see if there's any public input before we um kim John? Yeah. on your to-do list was to contact jimmy jalba uh, oh yeah oh yeah thank, thank you. you for that oh, just a just a quick hey we're new select board members we didn't mean to delay it, but we wanted to make sure everything was right or something like that. Yep. Oh, because nothing's ever been in writing. Right. You know? Yeah. We've got to take everybody's, you know, everybody's opinion and sometimes lay them into it. I mean, like, I can't say I'm pulling his buses because of that. I don't know the guy, so I'm not going to comment. And I'll, I'll explain that we can only anticipate that the fourth is again. We're going to have policy in place that Dan will have accessible or. Yeah, it yeah. shouldn't happen again. Yeah. Shouldn't, well, it shouldn't. And if for some reason Dan's not the town clerk, but we have something in that office that defines this. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, any public input online before we adjourn? Raise your hand. I don't see any hands. Going once. Twice. Okay, thank you, everyone. All right, so um, I'm going to make a